Miami Beach on a very warm, humid night here in South Florida. Temperature about 90 degrees. And thunder showers are expected here tonight. But it's a showdown match between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Miami Dolphins. Hello again, everyone. Frank Gifford with Al Michaels and Dan Deardorf. Happy you're with us. Two of the AFC's finest getting it on tonight. Both of them are division champions, defending division champions. Both have got off to really good starts. They won their first two games. Miami was able to get a win over two division opponents. They beat the Jets, and they have also beaten New England. And so they are on their way with what basically is a new football team, one of Don Shula's best ever. Meanwhile, the Pittsburgh Steelers, they got off to a good start. They squeaked by Detroit, and then they blew away Houston. But, Al, when you look at what has happened to them physically, uh, this has got to be a trouble team. They're playing well, but they've lost one of their inspiration leaders. Frank, think about it. If you're the coach of the Steelers, and Bill Cowher is one of the great young coaches ever on opening day, you lose Rod Woodson, one of the best cornerbacks ever for the season, to a knee injury. Before that game is done, Neil O'Donnell, your quarterback, goes down with a broken pinky. He is still out, won't play for another couple of weeks. Mike Tomzak will guide the team tonight. But the Steelers are very good, maybe the class of the AFC because of their defensive unit. It's great. The best core of linebackers in the National Football League, led on one side by the great Greg Lloyd, and on the other side by Kevin Green, who had 14 sacks last season to lead the league. Their defense will keep them in every game this year. Offensively, they're still trying to sign Bradshaw and Swan, but that's a story for another day. Tonight, <laughs> They'll take on the Dolphins, and Dan, the Miami Dolphins are a team that seems to have just about every part now in place. Uh, Al, in my opinion, I think this is the best football team that Don Shula's fielded since his powerhouse teams of the 70s. They're talking Super Bowl here in South Florida, and why not? Offensively, they're the same old ball club, only they're better with guys like Eric Green, uh, Irving Fryer, uh, three running backs that are really playing well, and of course, the incomparable Dan Marino. Defensively, they're led by Brian Cox, who not only talks the talk, but he walks the walk. But the reason I think this Dolphins club is aiming for the Super Bowl, amazingly, the best part of their football team is not their offense. It is their defense. They are playing outstanding defensive football. Patrolling the sidelines for us, as always, is Lynn Swan. Swanee, who's that with you? Well, Dan, this is Bill Cowher. He's got a great record on Monday night. Dan Marino is set to break a whole bunch of passing records this season. How do you stop him? God disrupt him, Lynn. we got to find a way to put some indecision in his mind. If we can do that, we'll have some success. Now, we all know you lost Rod Woodson in the first game. Does that change how you play defensively? You don't replace the Rod Woodson. we got to do it with a team effort. Offense, defense, and right here in a kicking game. Still aggressive. Thanks. Bill, thank you. Al? All right, thank you, Lynn. So, a full house at Joe Robbie Stadium. Frank mentioned a threat of thunder showers. It's been dry throughout the day. Field is in good shape. Pete Stoyanovich will kick off for the Miami Dolphins. And the Pittsburgh Steelers to receive each team with a mark of 2-0. and oh. And the other unbeaten team in the conference is Kansas City. That's Ernie Mills who injured an ankle in practice the other day and they were wondering about him and his availability as of 48 hours ago but he is okay he comes in when they use four wide outs and returns kicks and he gets set to accept this kick as he stands at the goal line each team last year meeting an untimely ending at the hands of the San Diego Chargers in the playoffs and here we go from Miami. Stoyo sends it down to the five yard line. Ernie Mills from the five back up to the 21 yard line. And Ernie thought he wasn't down or his knee hadn't hit the ground, but the official said yes, it did. Dwayne Dotson making the tackle. Now for the Steelers, Mike Tomzak has been around Chicago, Green Bay, Cleveland, and now in his third season with Pittsburgh. 11th year in the league Bam Morris and John L. Williams in the backfield Yancey Thigpen and Charles Johnson the wide outs Jonathan Hayes is the tight end because Eric Green is over here in Miami Jackson's a good one Newberry Dawson's terrific Strelzik and Searcy the guys up front they start with Morris in the backfield he stays in the block and Tom Zach throws an out over the head of Yancey Thigpen It'll be second down and 10. Now that defense to which Dan referred at the top. Up front, Cross, Bowens, Klingbile, and Coleman. And we'll also see a lot of Trace Armstrong. Singleton, Brian Cox in the middle, and Beavers are the linebackers. 
Vincent becoming one of the best in the league and Brown the corners Michael Stewart had a terrific game last week at New England and Gene Atkins the longtime New Orleans Saint are the safeties Eric Pegram's in the backfield take a toss to him Tom Zach finds nobody open so runs out past the 30 to the 33 yard line and picks up a first down behind a Jonathan Hayes block. Mike Tomzak enjoys the game as much as anybody I have ever seen. That's a sight you'll see a lot tonight. Tomzak smiling after a play. Yeah, he's a very physical player, too. He plays this game, uh, sometimes looks very physical, too, but uh, he can, there's Neil O'Donnell looking on. Of course, he broke the uh, little finger in his throwing hand. His right hand will be out probably another two or three weeks, but getting back to Tomzak, he is a very physical player, loves to play the game. He had to play some of the years he played in Chicago because he just took a pretty good beating. Now Bam Morris tries to knife his way through some Dolphins and then finally is taken down by Stewart and Marco Coleman. So he picks up a couple of yards as he gets it out to the 34 yard line. Perfectly read there. Nine. Perfectly read by Brian Cox. He just didn't finish up and wrap up but make no question the guy you're looking at right there is the leader of the Miami Dolphins defense. Early in his career, he played sometimes out of control, let his temper get the best of him. He has evolved into an all-around Pro Bowl football player. He's been there twice. He's going to be there for a lot of years to come. Morris behind a Williams block, and then he falls down in the baseball infield. Might have had the first down were it not for the area around where the second baseman would normally position himself for the Florida Marlins. That is a little loose, the infield, of course, and he was trying to make the cutback but again out in front of it watch Dramati Dawson he's out there too you don't often see a center out in front of a sweep now watch the plan of the right foot and he loses it right there Justin Strelzik the right guard gets around the corner and makes a good block as always a Steeler offensive line that can run can pull can trap and he's got the first down but it's a very active offensive line for the Steelers and that is nothing new Bill Cowers just carrying on where Chuck Knowles teams left off and boy a good look there where he tries to plant that left foot and it just slides on the dirt right out from under it played in a lot of infields it is very difficult you have to get the feel of it and they were out there working before the game it still is tough to handle on a quick cut they put a lot of water on it before the game first and ten from the 43. Tom Zach fires the open man is Charles Johnson and he pays the price. Gene Atkins for years one of the hardest hitters in the league does just that. Johnson coming all the way from the right side and he takes a shot from Atkins. Atkins laying back in a two deep zone and just picking up watch number 81 bottom of your screen he'll come across underneath the tight end Jonathan Hayes Now watch Atkins come into your picture. Fine stop. Nobody happier about this than number 50, Dwight Hollier, who's trying to chase Johnson across the field. Good look, though, at how his own defense is supposed to handle the crossing round. It is second and four from the 49, and the catch is made by the tight end Hayes at the 45 yard line, and that's a first down. Hayes, a longtime chief, now here with Eric Green going to Miami, and their number one draft choice, Mark Bruner, out of Washington, is a tight end who will also see a lot of action tonight. Ron Earhart wasn't quite sure how Miami would play this Pittsburgh Steeler offense without Eric Green. Now mention Eric Green now a Miami Dolphin but they played Eric Green differently with much more respect. He thought he would get a two deep zone some three deep zone. That's what he's getting so far. they will cover the linebacker Jonathan Hayes with the linebacker in most cases. Out of a double tight end set Morris swings to the outside and Cox takes him down after a pickup of two to the 43 yard line. Opening drive of the game three and a half minutes in no score. Now the Steelers guys I think are relishing this underdog role. I mean, here's a ball club that uh, that almost went to the Super Bowl last year one pass play away and they were sizable underdogs coming into this game uh, a touchdown or so and it's been a while since the Pittsburgh Steelers under Bill Cowher have have found themselves in this position. Ron Earhart has uh, he's been here before he's seen and done a few things been there done that. Hmm. And on second and eight, Earhart's call is to Morris straight up the middle, taking it to the 
38 yard line that'll set up a third down and three this drive began back at the 22 of the Steelers Singleton and Stewart made the stop there's the guy who invented been there uh, that. Hill Hawkeyes <laughs> checking out everything Don Shula who of course the winningest coach in the history of this game that the Steelers doing what they wanted to do moving the ball in the air moving it on the ground got a third and three coming up this is a big play their way of keeping Dan Marino and the offense off the football field control the ball and they go to four wide make it five now because nobody's in the backfield but Tom Zach out of the shotgun and on third and three it is tipped and picked off at the 20 yard line intercepted by J.B. Brown look out and Brown has it stripped at the 43 yard line picks it back up recovers his own fumble and gives Miami possession and then he's tackled out of bounds <laughs> Big Ben caught him stripped it but Brown was able to come up with a bouncing ball and the interception and fumble recovery gives the Dolphins the football. Then Charles Johnson finally makes the play. There's the strip right there by Big Ben. And a very fortunate bounce of the ball for the Dolphins. Dad? Yeah? There's uh, something I want to tell you. What is it, son? Well, Dad, you're my dad. And I love you, man. You're not getting my Bud Light, Johnny. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Ray, forget it, Johnny. I'm dead. I'm dead. I am dead. Dead? I got 47 boxes to ship out by tonight. Easy. FedEx shipping software. It's just point click and ship. <laughs> really? Bramwell thinks I'm working my tail off. Just point click and ship. Take a long lunch. Point click and ship. Play a little golf. Point click ship. FedEx shipping software is so easy. Just point click and ship from your own computer. Mr. Bramwell! <laughs> I'm dead. You're dead. I'm dead. You are really, really dead. For free shipping software, call FedEx. Emma, seems like we've known each other forever. Yeah, I know. Two weeks. Will you marry me? Because, Emma, I love you, man. Oh, Johnny. You're not getting my Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Johnny? Make it a Bud Light. Jane? It's Joan. Jane, Joan, whatever. I feel like I've known you forever. We're going to credit a guy just recently signed by the Dolphins, number 38. Watch the left part of your screen. Calvin Jackson right there deflects the ball, puts it up in the air where J.B. Brown can make the play on the football. Just signed this week, Calvin Jackson comes up big in a hurry. Well, damn, that ball would have been intercepted either way. That was a poorly thrown ball. Thick pin and Tom Zach were on different pages. Now Miami with its first possession from the 40-yard line. Dan Marino starts by gunning one to a wide open McDuffie. And he takes it to the Steelers 26 yard line. Marino right to the air for a big game 35 yards on the Dolphins first play from scrimmage. McDuffie just takes it deep. He reads zone. Now watch him just turn in. Set up right there. Right in front of Darren Perry. Slips by Darren Perry. Yeah, the it's dirt. The dirt strikes again. Uh, Perry slipped Perry trying to make right the down tackle. in the infield. Yep. The dirt claims its second Pittsburgh Steeler. Bam Morris slips running the ball. That time, Darren Perry slips trying to make a tackle. From the 25. Look out. Marino gets blindsided from behind. Greg Lloyd, number 95. And that's been one of the storylines all week long. Greg Lloyd saying, among other things, last week, I'm going to knock Marino into next week. But well, they knocked him. All the way up until about Wednesday right there. But, uh, he actually let up on Dan Marino there. Well, somebody should have tried to block him. Well, that would have been a good idea. <laughs> that would have been a good start. Greg Lloyd is one of the big hitters. Not all that big, but he will really unload. Well, and, he, and he really did let up. He wrapped his arms around, and that's what, that's what this game is about. That's what you should be doing rather than trying to knock a quarterback out of a football Well, I'll game. tell you something else. Dan Marino's not going to see, see the start of the second quarter if they don't start accounting for Greg Lloyd and Kevin Green on the other side. Maybe he's going to go over and talk it over. Oh. They run two plays, and Miami takes a timeout as Marino and the Dolphins regroup. 9.23 left in the quarter, no score. 
Introducing a new luxury vehicle with the most powerful V8 in its class, the safety of dual airbags, and the ability to take you where no luxury car can. The new Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited. With over 40 major advancements, it's truly the perfect luxury vehicle for whatever nature unveils. Jeep, there's only one. Every time you make a long distance call, AT&T sends out a signal to check the quality of the line. Automatically routing around trouble before you even finish dialing. Because in business, it all comes back to getting your calls through. Guaranteed network reliability at a competitive price. Linda, I'd like to bounce an idea off. Only from AT&T for the life of your business. Look, you're not going to believe this, but Goodyear retailers have lowered prices. An amazing 25% on some of Goodyear's most popular passenger, light truck, and performance tires. Other sale prices start at $19.99. Hurry, this sale ends soon. Jerry, this is amazing. We're the Blimp Boys. We're the dirigible duo. Check this out. There's the stadium. There's the game. There's McDonald's behind the stadium. Uh-oh. Pilot Pete, prepare for landing. And McDonald's has been sighted below. Now you can get a McDonald's hamburger for just 49 cents or a cheeseburger for just 59 cents, only for a limited time. This is the murder case everyone will be talking about. CNN and hard copy called five times. It's going to turn into a circus. Murder One premieres tomorrow, 10, 9 central on ABC. Let's take a look at the Dolphins now. Back of Marina, you have Kirby and Byers in the backfield. Fryer and McDuffie are the wideouts. O.J. has already caught that pass, and Green, the tight end. Webb and Sims are terrific on the left side. Been together since 90. Ruddy is the new center, with Gray and Heller filling out the line. Dellenbach now with New England, and Ruddy in his second year out of Notre Dame, anchoring the offensive line. It is... Second down from the 25-yard line, and Terry Kirby takes it to the 24. The ball is loose, but the play has been whistled dead. Larry Nemers is the referee tonight. It will be third down and nine. Defensively now, Buckner, Steed, and Seals in a 3-4 alignment. We talked about the linebackers, the fabulous quartet of Green, Kirkland, Brown really coming into his own, and Lloyd, who's made his presence felt already. And in the absence of Woodson now, and also Dion Figures, who starts the game in a reserve role, Williams and Mays are the corners. Lake and Perry, an excellent pair of safeties. Kevin Green with 14 sacks last season to lead the league. And he, he was ready to come. In fact, everybody starts to jump, and every flag in the joint comes out. I think Chris Gray, the right guard, may have uh, flinched. This will almost certainly be a false start against Miami. Unless they're going to try to figure he was in neutral zone infraction on the defensive oh. team. Five yard penalty, still third down. This is the new rule that's gone into effect that if there is a flinch offensively and they think it was caused by the defensive team being in the neutral zone, they'll charge it against the defensive team. That's a penalty for years. It was an automatic against the offense. Watch this. The Steelers will move. There goes Gray flinching at right guard. But they're saying he was induced. That's a, a big help to the offensive lineman today. That's a real break for them. Third down and four at the 19-yard line. 8.25 left first quarter. The Dolphins on their first possession. Marino out of the shotgun. They blitz. And it's almost picked off on a pass intended for a Byers. Carnell Lake. And had Lake picked it off, it would have been seven to nothing. Lake got one last week against the Houston Oilers for a 37-yard touchdown interception. And again, Dan just bobbled that ball. And what the Steelers are trying to do, they're trying to disguise their defense. They're trying to show blitz and get out of it. They're they're dealing in the line, and they're going to show a zone and then get into a man-for-man -man and come with the blitz. Anything to kind of change up on Dan Marino. Well, he really lucked out there. He was forced to throw that ball falling backwards. It had absolutely nothing on it. 37-yard attempt by Stoyanovic. That was not a good snap on the prior play by Ruddy. Forcing Marino to reach down for it. But a good snap and hold here. And Marino angry because the Dolphins, on a drive he feels, could have netted seven, settled for three. Three-nothing Miami. 
Visa, the world's number one card, presents number one. He is the youngest head coach ever to compile 300 victories and led his team into more Super Bowls than any man in history. Who is the NFL's number one winningest head coach? In 1970, Elton's very first song went gold. Then, Rocket Man went gold. Then, 103 of his other songs went gold. And now that he's touring with 38 musicians in a small army of stagehands... And uh, how will you be paying? Elton's gone gold. Money? These are gold. Oh, we'll need 371 wake-up calls. After all, nothing's got the power of gold. In 1993, Don Shula surpassed George Hallis to become the NFL's number one head coach. Coach Shula being Bob as he becomes the all-time winningest coach. Even though the new Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited is more sophisticated, more refined, and more luxurious than ever. You can be sure that underneath it all, it's still a Jeep. Texas A&M tackles Colorado. Ohio State takes on Pitt. Tennessee hosts Mississippi State or other regional action Saturday on ABC's College Football. What a shot from the Pompano Beach based Stars and Stripes, the Goodyear blimp, making its way about 20 miles south of its home base, providing the scenics tonight high above Joe Robbie Stadium. Sold out around 75,000 looking on. Dan Marino and the Dolphins take a 3 0 lead, and Stoyanovich to kick off. Ernie Mills back to receive it. Pulls it in at the three yard line, and Ernie. Gets buried up at the 20 yard line. Jeff Kopp, the first man to make contact with him to slow him up. Steelers take over for the second time. ABC's Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. FedEx for documents, packages, and freight worldwide. Our most important package is yours. And Jeep, maker of the new Jeep Grand Cherokee. Fred McAfee is one of the Pittsburgh running backs who will see action tonight, but they start with Morris. We'll also see a lot of Eric Pegram and Tom Zack to throw on first down. Contact made as it reaches Yancey Thigpen. The ball and J.B. Brown got there together. Well thrown ball, but timed out beautifully by J.B. Made the contact just as the ball arrived. J.B. Brown came into this game with a bit of a chip on his shoulder. Mike Tomczak had a big day in a Steelers victory last year. They beat the Dolphins 16-13. And after the game, he said, we were going after J.B. Brown. We thought he's a guy that, that we could victimize. And J.B. Uh, has been carrying this with him all offseason and has been looking forward to this thing tonight. Here's Van Morris going nowhere, stacked up by the right side of the defensive line. is in there as well number 51 who's in the middle of all of the action Tom Oliver Dottie who has been I mean it's a it's a catchphrase much maligned as would any coordinator be after a number of years but he's in his ninth season as Miami's defensive coordinator to give you an idea what kind of turnover there is in that job what Tony Dungy is next in line in terms of tenure and it's his fourth year mm -hmm. in Minnesota uh, well, they become head coaches those guys either become head coaches or get fired Five receivers set, but there's a flag on third and ten. It's picked off. It's Brown who picks it off, and J.B. runs it back to the 23-yard line. But let's see about the flag. Brian Cox was jumping, and unless he was induced across the line of scrimmage, and by whacking himself in the helmet, he tells you he was not. It will go against Miami and negate the play. Tom Zack must hope so. Another back Defense, throw. number 51 offside. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. The crowd, was, the, wrong yeah, way, was, yeah. the crowd was cheering because Nemers yeah. was pointing toward Pittsburgh. Well, if, if Cox would have come across because somebody moves, it's a dead play and the play never happens. So either way, it remains Pittsburgh's ball. 
just J.B. Brown gets a second interception taken away and and Tom Zach gets hammered. <laughs> I don't think he saw Cox coming in there. That was another ball he should not have thrown. Right into the hands of Brown. Even though you retain possession of the football, I think psychologically that hurts Mike Tomzak a little bit. Oh, yeah. Those things hang with you. Third down and five. Four receivers in this set. And that is incomplete. In and out of the hands of Yancey Thigpen, who's hearing a lot of footsteps right now. And there is a new appreciation of defensive football. Here in Miami, it's reminiscent of back in the 70s. Guys like Manny Fernandez and Nick Bonacani and the no-name defense. It's been a long time since they've had a defense to appreciate like that group. Ron Stark, the longtime Colt, now a Steeler, kicks. This is McDuffie from the 32. And OJ, who was a dangerous returner, brings it back to the 45-yard line. 647 left in the opening quarter at Joe Robbie Stadium where the Dolphins lead the Steelers three to nothing. Uh, if everyone's ready, I'd like to get started. The all-new Chrysler Town and Country LXI has Excuse me, made... how would you compare the leather trim seats to Lexus? Well, both have power and memory, but in terms right, of minivans... Uh, these dual climate zones. Now, isn't BMW doing something similar? Yes, in the 3 Series. However... I like that it handles more like a touring sedan. Excuse me, but isn't anyone going to compare it to another minivan? Anyone? What's amazing about technology? I think you could run to the store for me. At GTE, we think it's how it can make your life easier. Like Telego service. Ice cream? The world's first cordless phone you can take just about anywhere. Your pockets ring. Even okay. an all-night grocery store in Tampa, which David King finds pretty amazing. Do you have any sauerkraut? Why? Because he won't have to make another trip to the store tonight. Amazing. George is not a pet. He's a cattle dog. And that's a hard job. He's smart, too. He's smarter than the cattle, and he's smarter than most people I know. You sure do work up an appetite out here. A good meal is one of the things you look forward to. George likes Alpo. I don't blame him. Every bite has real beef in it. We take good care of each other. A great dog deserves Alpo. Tomorrow on ABC, Tony Danza's a single dad is about to meet Lori Loughlin. How do I look? Desperate. The series premiere of Hudson Street, tomorrow, here on ABC. Tomorrow night, big night on ABC, the season premiere of Roseanne, and then Tony Danza in Hudson Street, a brand new show premiering tomorrow night, and you also see Daniel Benzali starring in Murder One, which makes its premiere tomorrow night right here on ABC. The Dolphins for the second time tonight have the football. It's Terry Kirby picking up about two up to the 47-yard line. He is stopped there by Brenton Buckner. It'll be second down and eight. Kirby has worked his way back into a starting position. He was a starter a year ago for four games, had knee surgery, and has been working his way back. Had a tremendous rookie season in 93 with 75 receptions, 400 yards rushing. Just sensational for his third-round draft pick, but he is back almost 100 percent great basketball player was Kirby at Virginia pretty good athletic genes in that family as he picks up two. his brother will be involved in postseason baseball brother Wayne is a reserve outfielder with the Cleveland Indians I guess Terry played uh, point guard for mm -hmm. the Cavaliers and it what a huge boost to the Dolphins that they get Terry Kirby back not only back but but working his way back closely to what he was before. Keith Byers is back from his surgery that cost him part of last season, and he's returning to, to near his old form. A uh, couple big additions to this Miami offense. Much needed. Third down and six. This time, Ruddy's snap in the shotgun is a good snap, and the pass is right on the money to Irving Fryer, who was able to fight his way for a first down. He was met right at the stick by Alvoy Mays and was able to thrust himself forward and pick up the first down inside the 45 yard line. The Reverend can still play can he? Hmm. Irving Amen. Fryer 
Irving Fryer, an ordained minister, and he, it, he, it's amazing, but he's that rare athlete that just seems to get better and better and better. He's not a bad minister. I watched and not a bad films project they did on him. He's an exceptional speaker. Not a bad start, as you saw there in 1995. 100 yards both games, couple touchdowns each game. He's only averaging almost 28 yards of reception. And now Marino going deep, and it's incomplete, intended for Gary Clark, but great coverage by Willie Williams. And in fact, it was Clark who pretty much turns into a defensive back at the end of that play to make sure Williams doesn't pick it off. And I did figure that Williams would be tested very soon. We talked about the fact that Deion Figures, who was filling in for Rod Woodson, did not start tonight. We expect to see him, but uh, Willie Williams is mostly a special teams player and a nickelback and a dimeback. He actually played Gary Clark very well. That doesn't mean they won't come back. Hmm. There is Deion Figures on the sideline. His knee, he had to play the whole game last week in Houston, and his knee just really got sore on him. Here comes everybody. Second and ten. Marino guns one to the far side, and it is brought. No, he's out of bounds. Gary Clark was there. The pass was there, but Clark's feet were out. Thank you. What a good pickup uh, of the blitz on the part of the Miami Dolphins, and Gary Clark was open. He was just a little late getting there, and this is what Dan Marino was talking about earlier. He's got all these new receivers that have come in. You've Gary Clark, you've got Randall Hill, you've got Ricky Sanders. He works with so many of them that they really haven't got it timed out yet. As you can see, that takes precision timing, and he says, he'll tell you, I just haven't got it down yet. I haven't worked with them long enough. Well, if this crowd is booing the replay, they didn't look at it very closely because it was obvious that Clark had that foot on the sideline itself. That was a smart call by the official. Maybe they think it's a college game. Goodbye. Look at that. Marino gets sacked by the team picture. That looks like a jailbreak. He had, <laughs> Marino had five receivers. They were all deep downfield. Not enough men to, to block at the line of scrimmage, but no one has a checkoff valve. He had no place to put that football. That is what they call the pocket collapsing. No underneath receiver. That may be as many guys as I've ever seen in on one sack. Well, let's they just all count. arrived at the same time. <laughs> One, two, three, four. <laughs> and a half. Now, do they just get a quarter sack each? <laughs> 22%. Paper, paper and plastic. <laughs> Kid kicks it into the arms of Andre Hastings, who ran one all the way back last week against Houston. And there was the leader of that jailbreak, Carnell Lake. 3.59 left in the quarter. Three to nothing. Dolphins. Is there a defense that can stop me? Maybe not. Maybe if they had cars, they could stop me. Maybe not. Maybe if they had trucks. Maybe not. Maybe if they had helicopters. Helicopters and jets. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. As the official airline of the 1996 Olympic Games, Delta has created an event just for business travelers, the International Dash. With 4,900 daily flights to 300 cities, we'll fly you to the business world with a schedule that's as full as yours. And we don't do it so we can finish first. We do it so you can. Delta Airlines. Ronnie Clark recently returned to the Miami Dolphins, the architect of some of the fine offensive lines back in the 70s, went off to be head coach of the 49ers, went to Detroit, actually went to the Soviet Union three years ago and coached some American football over there, most recently a couple of years in Stanford. But uh, needless to say, Don Shula is very vocal about how glad he is that he is back. And an outstanding player himself, old offensive tackle. Ronnie was a fine football player, the Browning. 
Pittsburgh starts on the 20-yard line, and the pass is incomplete, intended for the tight end Jonathan Hayes, but he was blanketed by Chris Singleton. Well, Don Shula came here in 1970, and he won his first seven games on Monday Night Football. Tom Flores also won his first seven. George Seifert and Bill Cower with six. Now, Seifert won his first six, and, of course, George's teams have appeared several times since. Cower is 6-0 and oh on Monday Night Football. And his streak is still alive. On second and ten, this is John L. Williams. Didn't play last week because of a knee injury. Longtime Seahawk and a guy who catches a lot of passes. Stopped after a gain of three. It'll be third down and seven. I'd say so. He's uh, third ranked in the history of the league. Over 520 receptions for John L. Williams. But he's hurting. He had a little knee problem in training camp. And it's been lingering throughout the start of the season. And the fact that he is not at 100% has hurt the Steelers offense. He does it all. Third and seven. 320 to go in the quarter. Three nothing Miami. Tom Zach, who is two of seven is now three of eight but doesn't get the first down Hastings makes the catch but Calvin Jackson is right there to make his second big play of the game he tipped the earlier interception and stops a first down here the crowd appreciates it Calvin Jackson having one heck of a first quarter for the Miami Dolphins now Hastings breaks that pattern off a little bit early he's got to break a tackle to pick up the first down as a defensive player, those are the, the types of patterns you like to force your receiver into. Even if he makes the catch and you put a good tackle on him, he still doesn't have the first down. Ron Stark, 38-yard boot. O.J. McDuffie brings it back to the 40-yard line. A look at mean Joe Green, who spent so many years in a Pittsburgh uniform, a Hall of Famer, now the defensive line coach of the Miami Dolphins. He actually was a finalist in, in, in the head coaching position and uh, that was won by Bill Cower. He got the job. Joe was coaching the defensive line in Pittsburgh. Has made coaching his profession and Don Shula brought him to Miami and he has paid off big dividends for the Dolphins. He a man responsible in many ways uh, not only for the strong play of their defensive line but he's helped with Brian Cox a lot. Breaking through number 97, Ray Seals. And let's get a word from Lynn Swan. Al, you know, the, the receivers have a great advantage here with this infield, especially the Miami receivers. Irving Fryer in his last catch used that infield to get that defensive back backpedaling on it. Then he makes his break, he loses his footing. All the receivers have to be able to take advantage of, it, of that throughout the ball game. And I'll bet my reputation sometime during this ball game, a receiver is going to take a DB into the post. Come back to the outside, make him slip in that dirt. It's going to be a big catch. Mm -hmm. Oh, Swanee, what do you know about playing receiver? <laughs> Not much, Dan. <laughs> Second and 11. And the catch is made up at the 45 yard line. That's Terry Kirby hauling it in there. It'll be third down and five. Al Boyd Mays makes the tackle. I wonder if when the Steelers are on offense, uh, Swanee has this irresistible urge to run out on the field when a ball comes floating his direction. I don't know how he fights it back. And he loves this city. Uh, Swanee had a pretty good day in Super Bowl 10 against Dallas at the Orange yeah. Bowl. Not bad. <laughs> Third and five, a minute 20 left, opening quarter. Miami leading 3-0. Each team 2-0 and coming in. And what is this? Yeah, I, I didn't hear a whistle, but everybody knew that that play was dead. I didn't hear a whistle either. Just dogs hurt. Prior to the snap, false start, 72 offense, five yards, still third down. Well, when you find one of those guys, let me know. <laughs> Chris Gray. Next week, we'll take our first look on Monday night this season at the 49ers. Rolling right along, Steve Young and Jerry Rice against the Detroit Lions and what is now a pretty critical game for a team that has dug itself a hole at 0 3 Barry Sanders and company Lions 49ers next Monday it's third down and 10 after the penalty Marino throws and it's incomplete would have been a first down and that's Eric Green the Steeler who came over as the high priced free agent 
first pass thrown his way tonight, and he can't hold it in. Now Green didn't get three off the line of scrimmage. They bumped him around as he came down, and the pressure was on. Here comes the deal we were talking about a moment ago. That's Lloyd coming to the inside. Marino, his timing was off with Eric Green, who was bumped at the line of scrimmage. He didn't have a chance to get it in there. It's a very disruptive defense we're watching tonight on the part of the Steelers. John Kidd kicking to Andre Hastings. A 38-yard kick. Hastings ran one back for a touchdown against uh, Houston last week. And a flag is thrown as he's run out of bounds by the kicker at the 43-yard line. John Kidd forced him out, and we'll get the call from Larry Nemers. Boy, and this flag's all the way back inside the 30. If this does go against the Steelers, it's going to move the ball all the way back inside the 20-yard line. Quite a change in field position for Bobby April and his group. In any event, Hastings has turned into a great return. During down. the return, number 20, clipping during the run back, 15 yards was far the foul. That's Eric Pegram, the running back. Oh, did that hurt? Pegram coming from Atlanta. We'll be watching him in. They'd like to get him in for 14 or 15 carries tonight if they would. There it is right there. And he, he just rolls up the back up. of the legs, absolutely. Whether that was intentional or not doesn't it's much all matter. Robert Wilson was the Dolphin. He got tangled up, it looked like, and there's more timing when your return man starts to turn that corner. You hope that the man you're going to block is squared away with you, and it wasn't in that case. Pittsburgh begins the drive at the 14-yard line in the waning moments of the quarter. Oh, and a terrible pass intercepted at the 21 by Troy Vincent. Not a stealer in sight. Ball may have slipped out of his hand. That could have come off the dirt, too. The ball being snapped off the dirt often will get a little drip of sweat from the center. It'll pick up some dirt, and you just lose it. And I think that probably is what happened. It snapped off the dirt. Now watch him. He takes it back, and he just loses it. Right he, there. He wants to throw it out in the flat. Well, now we'll have a dirt controversy. He just lost it right there yeah. before he even delivered it. So that's the second pick of the quarter. With 33 seconds remaining now in the opening quarter, Bernie Parmalee comes in the game at running back and sets up deep as the ace back in this set and takes the handoff. And Parmalee gang tackled after a gain of a yard and a half. Bernie's a good one. Came on very well last year after... Kirby got hurt, but he's at fumbleitis. He's fumbled three times in the first two games this year and fumbled twice in their last regular season game last year. And then you watch him when he runs tonight. He will be protecting that football. You do not fumble very often with Don Shula or you're playing somewhere else. Well, the Dolphins have had tremendous success running the football the first couple weeks of the season. This is the best front seven, though, that they've seen. End of one, three, nothing, Miami. Back we come with Monday Night Football after this message in the work for ABC Stadium. All right, gentlemen, tomorrow, your butts are mine. Lights out. Man, I'm hungry. Russell Athletic Wear is made to handle the toughest situations on and off the field. Hot dog. First fries. Hamburger. Tacos. Tacos grande. Pizza. Coach? Going somewhere, ladies? Hard work. Dedication. <laughs> Commitment. Get Russell Athletic. Get tough. Get up there, large one. Go, go. It sounds like a cliche, but we literally wanted to put luxury at the customer's fingertips. Power leather trim seats with driver's side memory. Press here. Dual climate zones. Push here. I think probably the biggest challenge was how to turn such a concept into a luxurious space for seven passengers. Well, open here. 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 And here. <laughs> I guess we did it. This is ABC. Stuck somewhere back the east. flight has been canceled. The five most hated words of every business traveler. On a day like this, What's I know it's not the airline's fault. Still, Still, I just want somebody to give me some answers. What if we can reroute you through another city? Those are the people I come back to. They try and find a way and give me my best option. Maybe even on another airline. 
I appreciate that, because a little honesty goes a long way. Tell Billy by halftime, I'll be there. Behind the scenes of Murder One tonight after the game. Now, now Frank, is Kathy on that boat? <laughs> No, and neither am I. No, but <laughs> Pat Riley is. <laughs> Pat Riley owns the boat. Pat, beautiful and, skyline and, of downtown Miami. I was going to say, and he owns about yeah. half of the skyline in that in that picture. The new says. man in town. Yeah. We asked Don Shula if he's had a chance to visit with Pat Riley yet since he's got here. And no, but he's certainly had some nice times with him in the past. Nicky Arson, of course, the owner yeah. of Carnival, also owns the Heat down here. And Pat Riley is the Heat. So, Second and eight from the 15 yard line, and Keith Byers takes it to the two as he catches it over the middle of the first and goal for Miami. Well, I mentioned how Byers' return has really helped this offensive team. Blew his knee out a year ago, got a scare last week by turning it a little bit, missed a little practice this week. But out of the backfield, Keith Byers is among the very best in this league at running the routes, catching the ball, and he is a big man. Keep in mind, this is a back coming out of the backfield. He is every bit of 255 pounds. He's got some big feet, but he is light upon them. Boy, is he good. First and goal at the two. Bernie Parmalee. Puts it back inside <laughs> and reaches and gets it. Touchdown. Bernie was hoping he wouldn't drop it. There's a classic case, guys, of if at first you don't get it across. Bring it back in, lunge forward, try it again. Oh, he's a scratcher and he's a fighter. That's what they like about him. How about Keith Sims, the left guard, doing a little Ronaldo Nehemiah on the way out there. He's got a hurdle. Watch Sims, second guy from the right of your screen. He's got to jump over somebody. He gets out and makes a heck of a block. First, second, he gets it in. Beautiful, beautiful. That is amazing when yeah. you think of the baggage he's carrying with him. Yeah. The five fumbles in the last three regular season games. And to pull it off there. And scintillatingly he pulls it off as Soyanovich kicks the extra point. And the turnover by the Steelers is very costly. The interception, subsequent touchdown by Parmalee, and the Miami Dolphins take a 10 to nothing lead. Dad? Yeah? There's uh, something I want to tell you. What is it, son? Well, Dad, you're my dad. And I love you, man. You're not getting my Bud Light, Johnny. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Ray, forget it, Johnny. If you ever end up in some Ben-Hur movie in your all-new Pontiac Sunfire GT with its powerful twin-cam engine, you'll be glad you have a quick-handling sport suspension. And, of course, 150 horses. Introducing the all-new Pontiac Sunfire GT. Finally, a real set of wheels you can really afford. Emma? Seems like we've known each other forever. Yeah, I know. Two weeks. Will you marry me? Because, Emma, I love you, man. Oh, Johnny. You're not getting my Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Johnny? Make it a Bud Light. Jane? It's Joan. Jane, Joan, whatever. I feel like I've known you forever. We're in Miami, Joe Robbie Stadium, Al Michaels with Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff, Lynn Swan, the Goodyear Blimp. Stars and stripes hovering high above the home of the Dolphins and the Florida Marlins, a facility now nine years old, a name for the late owner of the Miami Dolphins, Joe Robbie. Greg Lloyd, Kevin Green, these guys uh, a proud defensive unit, but they have not received any help from their Steeler offense tonight. From the 10-yard line, this is Eric Pegram running back the kick, and he brings it out to the 
27, tackled by Dwayne Dotson. ABC's Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We are driving excitement and Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. You're right, Dan, except for that first possession by the Steelers, they've done nothing. Yeah, they banged off a couple first downs that first time around. Good look at what football is in the 90s. Neil O'Donnell listening to the call of the play through a helmet. But Mike Tomzak has had a rough go in the first quarter. 27 yard line. Bam Morris picks up about seven. Third round draft choice out of Texas Tech last year. And they picked him up even though it looked like Barry Foster would be their guy forever. Foster a tremendous start to his career but Barry was so injury prone eventually went to Carolina he is now out of football and this guy's the key guy three years ago 1800 yards for Barry Foster now you think he's out of the game and they were very lucky with Bam Morris he had about four six four seven speed and they got him in the third round and he turned in a great year last year second down and four Morris he'll give you that straight ahead type of power running but one of the reasons they went to Atlanta to pick up Eric Pegram was to give them that threat that speed threat for Ron Earhart's offense that explosiveness and and that's what really doesn't seem to be there in, in this Steeler running game it's a it's an excellent run blocking offensive line they can they can move well they can hammer it they can run block straight ahead but I just don't think they got the guy that can make a 10 yard play into a 40 yard play. Mm -hmm. Third down and three out of the shotgun. Tom Zack throws and the catch is made by Andre Hastings for a first down. So they convert and take it out to the 41 yard line. First down Steelers. Four wide outs and Hastings taking advantage of the zone gets just beyond the sticks. Turns in and well thrown that time by Tom Zack. You hate and the, good protection. You know this early in the second quarter you hate to look at a specific play. But this would have been a pitiful time for the Steelers to run three and out and turn this ball back over to the Miami defense. Would have been very demoralizing. That's right. Down 10 nothing. The Steelers need some first down. If not some points, they need some first down. That was their first third down conversion. And now Tom Zach to the air on first and 10. And he swings one out to John L. Williams. And he's taken that after a gain of four. Michael Stewart, the safety, comes up to stop him. Stewart, a big game last week, including a key interception against New England longtime Ram two fine safeties came in last year Gene Atkins came in from New Orleans and Stewart came in from the Rams replacing Jarvis Williams and Lewis Oliver and they did a great job last year they are a real fine pair of safeties Ben Coates the fine tight end of the Patriots only three catches last week Stewart Atkins got a lot of credit for that second and six here's John L. Williams Picking up one, maybe two to the 47, setting up a third and four with 11-15 to go in the half, and Miami leading 10 to nothing. Bill Cower, at the age of 38, he's in his fourth year in the league, and there are still seven players in the league older than Bill Cower. Was he in uh, kindergarten when Don Shula got his first head coaching yeah. job? And in my opinion, it's impossible to be in his company and not a enjoy it and b be impressed with his command of the game. Bill Cower will win in this league for a long time. Third and four, and Tom Jack gets sacked back at the 36-yard line. Ryan Cox and Trace Armstrong. They brought Trace Armstrong in to do just that, come off the bench, give him fresh legs. He comes spinning around the corner, and speaking of in the league for a long time, Tom Zach won't be in too long if they keep popping him like that. Joe's going, that's the way it's supposed to be, my men. Armstrong who played for the Bears, played, as a matter of fact, with Tom Zach with the Bears, unloads. Well, Armstrong makes a good move on Leon Searcy, the right tackle, to get inside. Ron Stark, the kick. He angles one. McDuffie is back there to let it bounce out of bounds at the 23-yard line. So for Ron Stark, a 40-yard move. 10 11 remaining in the first half. Miami up 10 7. Two hundred and eighty five horsepower. Two 
two airbags. And two easy open tops. The Pontiac Firebird T-Top and Firebird Convertible. Too cool. Monroe developed sensor track shocks to smooth out the road for a comfortable ride. But sensor track doesn't stop there. It's the only shock that also gives you extra control when you need it most. Sensor track shocks and struts, only by Monroe, for comfort and control. A top assassin wants out, another wants in. But to be number one, he must eliminate the competition. Sylvester Stallone, Antonio Banderas, Assassins, directed by Richard Donner. Rated R. Starts Friday, October 6th. Jerry, this is amazing. We're the Blimp Boys. We're the dirigible duo. Check this out. There's the stadium, there's the game. There's McDonald's behind the stadium. Uh-oh, pilot Pete, prepare for landing, and McDonald's has been sighted below. Now you can get a McDonald's hamburger for just 49 cents or a cheeseburger for just 59 cents, only for a limited time. We could all use a little extra money, but what this woman did to get it could put your life in danger. And primetime caught her red-handed. Primetime Wednesday. Well, they'll be intertwined forever. Shula and Marino, 13 seasons for Dan, and 173 games with Shula coaching and Marino starting. Nolan Bradshaw would be next, Hank Stram and Len Dawson, Dan Reeves and John Elway follow, but Shula and Marino 173 starts for Dan with Shula at the helm. At the 22-yard line, Dan starts this drive with a play-action pass and good protection, and it's knocked away at the last moment. Looked like Darren Perry got a hand on it, and Eric Green, the former Steeler, is shaken up. Somebody maybe have got their hand inside his mask or maybe even was, looked like he was grabbing at his eye. There's a lot of pushing and shoving coming off that line of scrimmage. And it looks like Eric Green is going to have to come to the sideline. Here's a follow up. Most regular season wins as a combination. Shula and Marino now 109, and Chuck Knoll and Terry Bradshaw with 107 victories. Yeah, I think Darren Perry came across and went for the ball and stuck his hand into the face mask of Eric Green. Then they've had a lot of time for Dan Marino to throw the football. Green might need Ace Bailey to work on the cut. Second down and 10 at the 22 yard line. Marino will swing pass to Kirby and he gets rolled down by Chad Brown up at the 23 yard line. So much talk about the linebackers with Lloyd and Green, but Chad Brown is a guy because of the double teaming that Lloyd and Green get. Chad Brown certainly making his presence felt. Well, on quite a roll. He's seven sacks in the last seven games he played. He had three lacks week against Houston, and he's very humble about it. He says, "Well, that's because I've got Kevin Green on one side and Greg Lloyd on the other," and he he probably is partially right. They do draw the attention. He calls those scheme sacks where he comes in untouched. Third down and nine. And Marino gets it away, and Fryer makes the catch and gets taken down at the 29 yard line, considerably short of the first down. Brown in on the tackle. Well, well I'll tell you, that's great picking up on the part of the Miami Dolphins because there is an extraordinary amount of movement, Dan, in the line. There's a blitz from the outside, a corner blitz, and the Dolphins were able to pick it up. Well, they, they it was a nice combination block on the left side. Uh, Richmond Webb, the left tackle. It's a good work by the back. It's a it's a well schooled offensive line. John Kidd the putt. Andre Hastings. Ooh. They need a biggie. Ooh, close to the fair catch, and it's a good punt by Kidd. Fair caught by Hastings at the 23 yard line. Kidd's punt, 50 yards. 8:38 left in the half. Welcome to the greatest air connections of the past 25 years, brought to you by Southwest Airlines, celebrating its 25th anniversary. Southwest Airlines, the low fare airline.
Not content with merely tying the single-season touchdown reception record, Miami's Mark Clayton went for the record with his third touchdown of the game that also gave the Dolphins a last-minute victory over the Cowboys. Here they go, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Miami! Airline Infractions with Southwest Airlines Chairman Herb Kelleher. When other airlines commit penalties, I call them on it. Grounding the baggage. Uh-oh, looks like they're not going to get this one off on time. Delay of flight. I said single file. Personal file. On sportsmanlike service. Why can Herb make the calls? Because Southwest is number one in baggage handling, on-time arrivals, and customer satisfaction of all major airlines. Next time you fly, make the right call. Only one has the moves of Barry Sanders. Only one has his acceleration. Only one has his control. Only one has such breathtakingly perfect balance. Seville STS with the North Star system. A great performer creates a higher standard. come to call San Francisco and Detroit play ball that's the Wednesday night lineup in the new season on ABC Ellen the Drew Carey show that's Drew upper left race under fire the naked truth starring Tom Hanks and primetime live coming your way this Wednesday night right here on ABC there was a penalty at the end of the play for a late hit for number 49 Robert Wilson of the Dolphins and so Pittsburgh gets a break and will begin this drive at the 38 yard line. I guess the word on uh, Eric Green the tight end for the Dolphins is he had some dirt in his eye and that he'll be back. I think somebody put it in there though. He looked like he was in pain when he got up. There he is. Big man of course had some fine years with the Steelers and for a six year deal about 12 million bucks he came to the Dolphins this year. What he has done for the Dolphins is help establish that running game. He's not only a good receiver a big man huge man a six five and about 280 but he is a fine blocker at the line of scrimmage and he has helped enormously their running game. Marino Kozar going over the formation sent down from their camera up above technology now a part of game day in the NFL. From the 38 yard line, Eric Pegram swings to the outside. And he's wrestled out of bounds up at the 43 by J.B. Brown. The Steelers tonight have been pinned every time they've started a drive. Look at where they've begun their drives. And their best to start would have been from their own 27 prior to this possession now, which begins out at the 38. Two and interceptions and three punts. Not, not, the, uh, not the success recipe for yeah. winning ball games. Not two turnovers and nothing but punts. Second and four from the 43. Tom Zach. And the first down catch made by Yancey Thigpen. He gets rolled out of bounds at the 43 yard line by Chris Singleton. So the Steelers showing some life offensively, a 14 yard pickup. That's and a little five yard hitch and a good connection on the part of Tom Zach and Thigpen. And I think it's the kind of patterns that the Steelers have to get back to. Mike Tomczak has been shaky throwing the ball early. Some uh, some bad things have happened. I think they've got to get movement between the tackles with their offensive line running the ball. Short patterns. Hopefully one of the receivers can break the tackle and make something happen. Out of the eye this time. They give it to Morris back to Williams. And he takes it to the 40-yard line for a gain of two for Singleton on, on the stop again. Think about it, Dan. I think uh, J.B. Brown gets the message. He is the man they're going to work on all night. That's about the only place they've thrown the football is over on the left side. Let's take a look at Brian Cox. Took over the middle linebacking spot at the beginning of last season with the retirement of Afadal, and we touched on it earlier. But he has been terrific this year. Pro Bowl a year ago. He has two sacks coming into tonight. One interception, a fumble recovery, and an inspirational leader as well over at Miami Dolphins. Second and eight. Jack hangs in, throws, and a great catch is made, but then the ball is lost. Charles Johnson does not get credit for the catch. They're going to say incomplete. 
late whistle as Johnson appeared to come down with it and then they said no. And Cower saying I he made the catch and we recovered the fumble. I think he did. It was too. a he was very on, late whistle. He was down on his back where the whistle should have blown and the ball came out. Bill saying look for the replay but they're not going to replay it here. We will though. He's down right there when the ball comes out. Yep. Well you could see the ball down around his midsection. Let's see from this angle. Does he demonstrate control of the football. I don't think he ever had control of the football. I think that's a good call by the official. That ball looked like it was moving around in his hands the whole time. It'll be third and eight and the Steelers are going to take a timeout. Rarely does someone go where no one has gone before. Rarely does someone accomplish what has never been accomplished before. Rarely does an automotive system achieve a combination of advantages never achieved before. But when it does, the world tries to follow. The North Star System by Cadillac. Creating a higher standard. You've heard all about the many fabled wonders of the information superhighway. Starting with Windows 95, it's a lot easier to actually get somewhere on it. Start connecting. Start Windows 95. You're cruising at 13,000 feet. Winds are moderate, sky is clear, a perfect day to jump. It's blue sky skydiving outside Seattle, where you can see the world at 160 miles an hour. So if you're crazy enough to try it, make sure you're smart enough to bring your Visa card, because at Blue Skies, American Express just won't fly. By the way, they do insist you pay first. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Saturday, it's a father and son swimming lesson. You know what they call a redneck that can't swim? Bait. On the new comedy hit, the Jeff Foxworthy Show, Saturday on ABC. They ruled this not a catch, and probably justifiably so. What Bill Cower was yelling at, look at Troy Vincent, the Dolphin defender. Cower wanted a face mask, and he well could have had one, but there was no control of the football by Charles Johnson. Good call by the official. Got one right, one wrong. Yeah, you can understand why he didn't control the ball when he's, when he's getting his head ripped off. Third down and eight now for the Steelers. Tom Zach trying to convert, and the catch is made at the 33 yard line, but appears to be a little short of the first down. Charles Johnson is there, so it's only a gain of seven. Well, you got to go for it, I yeah. would think. Mm -hmm. We're Looks looking at an awfully right long front field of, uh, goal. J.B. Brown. Yeah. You're looking at a 50 yard field Kicked goal. Kicked off the dirt. Yeah, and Norm Johnson would be the kicker. Right. I was talking to him before the game, and he says he has a strained abdominal yeah. muscle. And kicking off the dirt, I think, makes that decision easy. Yep. It was hard, very difficult to run a play to when you're not used to working on dirt. The Steelers are not. To get any kind of attraction here offensively is going to be very difficult for the offensive line. They're not going to well get it off. Running backs. And yeah. Pittsburgh's going to take a timeout. Well, the play clock was down to two seconds. They weren't going to get it off. And it will be fourth down and one. And let's get a word from Brent Musburger. All right, and now coming up at halftime, Peter King of Sports Illustrated is going to tell us about the $300 million lawsuit that was filed today by the NFL against the Dallas Cowboys. You spoke with Miami quarterback Dan Marino. We'll have that interview. And Steve Young of the unbeaten San Francisco 49ers talks about playing the Wounded Lions next Monday. All coming up on the Toyota Halftime Report. Back now to Al. Okay, Brent. So pretty much all-out war now, the NFL mm -hmm. and Jerry Jones. That's a lot of zeros. Really getting nasty. Owners meeting taking place tomorrow in Atlanta. Meanwhile, here after the timeout taken by Pittsburgh, it's fourth down and one. Strictly a power formation here by the Steelers. They've got Oliver Gibson, a defensive lineman in the backfield, leading the way.
play for Bam Morris, who bans his way for a first down over the right side. Not much in the way of trickery there, was there? No, sir. <laughs> when, you, when you have a defensive tackle playing fullback, yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes if it's Jim Flanagan, you throw a pass. Yeah, we saw that last week for a touch eye. You don't see that much in midfield. That, uh, that works better from the one-yard line. Nothing fancy here. Strelzik, Searcy, Jonathan Hayes, and then Bam Morris. Puts his 240 pounds to work. Good pickup by the Steelers. From the 30-yard line on first down, and Morris makes his way to the 20, makes his way down there for what should be a first down. Bam likes working in that dirt. Hey, anybody named Bam ought to like it in the <laughs> dirt. Yeah, well, it really hurts. It gets down your back, gets down your pants. Ooh. It, it It's like water. It, it can find any place. <laughs> dirt. Dirt and sand can, can find every nook and cranny. It's like sandpaper. I just keep working on it. Makes it a fun flight home, doesn't oh, it? Well, <laughs> you hope you take a shower before you fly <laughs> From the 19-yard line, you hope you get it all out. Bam Morris picks up two, taking it to the 18. Tackled by Tim Bowens. Big drive for the Steelers. Started at their own 38-yard line. Down 10 to nothing. They need to get it in. You know, back in the old days, uh, a lot of times they'd turn off the water in the visitor showers. And <laughs> visitors were treated rudely back. Uh, yeah, uh, Papa ba Bear Hollis, he used to give you nothing but cold water, and you try it in December in Chicago, and it was yeah. pretty tough. You know what it cost to heat that water to make hot water? <laughs> he wasn't going to pay for it. On second and eight, the fake to Pegram. Tom Zach with a ton of time and Makes it pay off as Johnson makes the catch at the eight-yard line. Is tackled hard by Cox. Ball loose, but after the play, and then Jonathan Hayes gets into it with Gene Atkins. Well, the operative phrase now was uh, plenty of time, a little rollout with a little play-action fake, and nobody pursued Tom Zach. He was looking again to go against A.B. Brown with Yancey Thigpen, but good coverage by Brown. He had all the time in the world to look around and find a receiver look at this he comes out with a little play action to Pegram sets up nobody out here with him plenty of time to get the ball to Johnson Steelers trailing 10 to nothing first and goal from the seven and because of the dirt Tom Zach goes down Boy. was collapsing anyway and down he went an out of character play for the Steelers Ron Earhart Runs a real smash mouth type of offensive machine and to throw it on first down inside the 10 yard line that that's a that's a mix them up call by Earhart that that's backfires big time. Definitely I'm sure he, he didn't even want to make the call even though he did but it is a mix them up kind of a night for the Steelers trying to mix the pass with the run and that time the slip by Tom Zach good coverage on the part of the Dolphins that precipitated the slip by Tom Zach they just had good coverage downfield. 11th play of the drive, second and goal from the 15. The screen is set up. This is Morris. They block Cox out of the play. Flag is down. He takes it to the four-yard line. Michael Stewart makes the tackle. Good-looking screen, no matter what they call. And it doesn't look good for the Steelers. They're walking away. Illegal contact against Pittsburgh. Offensive pass interference, number 85, blocking before the ball was thrown. Ten-yard penalty, still second down. Well, that's Jonathan Hayes, the tight end. Well, he can't get downfield and block before the ball is thrown, and there's no question he did. And working against Troy Vincent, he could have... It was not much of a block. You can block like that at the line of scrimmage. You can't do that downfield either. He could have called it either way. It is second and goal from the 25. Miami leading 10 to nothing. Tom Zach's going to take off and won't go very far and hit hard by Atkins at the 23 yard line. Armstrong also in on the stop. It'll be third and goal from the 23. Uh, it's, it's unthinkable that having been at the seven yard line, the Steelers are now trying to concern themselves with getting in decent field goal range. Mm. And that is certainly the uh, that is certainly the case right now with Norm Johnson being dinged. And you'll be kicking off the dirt in all probability yeah. if uh, 
And I'm quite certain that's something they don't practice very often. Well, you can't get off the dirt uh, anywhere inside the 40-yard line on that end. Tom Zack throws. It's incomplete. He bounces one into the hands of Mark Bruner. And so that means Norm Johnson comes in for a 39 or 40-yard field goal off the dirt infield. Boy, it all starts with negative yardage on the first down play at the seven-yard line. And the crowd oh. responds because that Dolphin defense, Brian Cox said the other day, he said, we've got more good players now on defense than on offense. He may have been overstating it, but yeah, he, they're close. But you can't fault him for having some newfound pride in this Dolphins D. Norm Johnson off the dirt with a strained abdominal muscle out of the Ron Stark hole, bangs it through. The 14-year veteran out of UCLA, the longtime former Seahawk, and most recently Falcon, who was cut when they signed Morton Anderson and was out of work, wins the job when Dean Biasucci gets cut by Pittsburgh and tacks on three here. Can you repeat that? <laughs> I was trying to say that <laughs> they picked up a good one, too. Yeah. They were surprised that he was still out there because there's a lot of leg left in Norm Johnson. Yeah. Take a yeah. look at the Dolphins last week, their defense. The last time... The last four times New England had the ball inside the 20, third and five at the Miami 19, they stopped him. Then on fourth and one, the Patriots tried to run the ball in and couldn't. Klingbaum and Stewart throwing the rookie Curtis Martin for a loss. And then Cross tipped the pass, which was intercepted by Cox, thrown by Bledsoe. And then the last time New England had it on fourth and five, incomplete. So Bill Parcells' Patriots last week four times inside the 20-yard line, and Miami just crunched them. Well, the Jets and uh, the New England Patriots, they were combined at 103 yards rushing. By and the way, Bledsoe, just to, to fill in, a lot of you know that he was hurt yesterday, slightly separated non-throwing shoulder, the left one. Mm -hmm. They he have looked, a bye week next week, but they do expect him to play in two weeks. Well, he looked like he was hurting. Stayed in the game. He, he was a tough kid. Meanwhile, two minutes and 24 seconds left for Dan Marino, whose ball club has a one touchdown lead. Lead. Uh, you don't need me to tell you that that is plenty of time for the Dolphins to go down the field. Twice. <laughs> yes. Johnson kicks off to the 12-yard line, and this is Irving Spike bringing it back out to the 25. 216 to play in the opening half. 10 to 3. 12 years ago, tomorrow, this was Dan Marino's first ever professional touchdown pass against the Raiders in a Monday night game. The flag came in, as you saw, against the Raiders. And uh, Dan's thrown a few since then. Well, very familiar, didn't it? <laughs> Joe Rose caught A year that later, pass. we'd have him in Super Bowl 19. And of course, I think Dan and a lot of other Miami Dolphins and certainly their fans thought there were going to be a lot of Super Bowls after that one and they're still struggling to get back. They pick up the Chad Brown blitz and that gives Marino the time to complete the pass into the arms of the longtime former Redskin Gary Clark up at the 39 and a first down. And that will take us to the two minute warning. Two minutes to go in the first half. Shulman's Dolphins lead by Seven. Money, sex, and power. Controversial. Two out of three ain't bad. Be careful, your dream case don't blow your brains out. Provocative. I knew there were powerful men with money. I was in control and I liked it. Disturbing. Maybe two separate cuts. Maybe it was a crime of passion. On October 13th. I know too much. See why some fantasies <laughs> go too far. Jake. I need your help, I'm afraid. Who am I speaking with? This film is not yet rated. You got the winning color! I uh, drive oversized loads. And I drive the warning vehicle, the flag car. I've been using Penzo for about 17 years. Most people will trade their car with what 60,000 miles on it we could have gone through seven cars right. now with the revolutionary penstar molecule penzoil clings to moving parts works like liquid ball bearings you could say it's been working overtime for us engine problems before you try a tune-up try gum out first the solution could be less than five dollars enterprise hi i'm at the repair shop i need to rent a car 
Enterprise will arrange to pick you up. This is great. Drive you to our place and get you on your way. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Presenting the ultimate tire for your 4x4, the Michelin LTX. Michelin technology gives it a smooth, quiet ride. Yet it's tough enough, Michelin enough, to get you through anything. Two teams that came very close to going to the Super Bowl last year. But the way I look at it, Miami has really helped itself with their acquisitions. The Steelers, especially with the injuries, though, you wonder if they're as good as they were last year. Well, no question about Miami, particularly with Eric Green. When they get the chance to work him more into the offense, the timing has worked out with the Gary Clarks. The other receivers, uh, it's hard to imagine this team being better offensively than it's been. But I think at Miami, it's the depth. They have good players backing up really good players. I've never seen this deep a Dolphin team. From the 39-yard line, tremendous protection for Dan Marino, but then the pass is incomplete. It's just especially on defense you look at the quad I mean people like Terrell Buckley backing up the secondary of uh, the return it's it's the people who've come back from Miami you know you've got Kirby you got Byers uh, uh, you've got Troy Vincent who last year struggled coming back from a knee injury he's all the way back uh, the Brian Cox now his second year in the middle you you just get the feeling that the pieces have really started to gel and to fit we're well, in Miami. Down here, you get the feeling it will be unacceptable if they don't go to the Super Bowl, too. Yeah, they're really talking about it. And who can blame them? Second and 10 from the 39 yard line. And the catch is made by Kirby, and he runs out of bounds. That stops the clock at the 47. It'll be third and two with the buck 49 to go in the half. And that is Chad Brown, the linebacker who is shaken up. Uh, he comes on a blitz that time. The Steelers cross their middle linebackers, and Bill Cowers' heart has to be in his throat right now. Here comes Brown around the corner. Ooh, and he Ooh. just runs right into his own player, Ray Steeles. Oh, boy, that's, that, that's the kind of an injury you, you just hate to see. And, boy, that's what we want to see. And you're hoping... What? You're hearing them say it's just a stinger. His head was back, caught it right in the chest. Boy, good news for Chad Brown, at least initially here, that he's that he's up and, and moving again. He comes around the corner, goes right by Marino and right into the chest of Ray Seals. Seals is about 309 pounds on the flip card. All right, Chad. Oh, that is good. Good news. deal. Woo. Injury in the uh, last two minutes of the half, among other things. Uh, the good news is he's fine. The bad news is if Pittsburgh needs a timeout, they don't have one now because that is a charge timeout. And they are out of timeouts. And Miami right now, with a minute and 49, has two remaining. Looks like they're working on the face mask. He might have actually broken that face mask with the contact. It'll be third down and two now at the 47 yard line. There's, there's some damage here. <laughs> that was some shock. Yeah. His chin strap looked like it got caught down in his face mask. That's, don't you see it more often than not though? Defensive players get hurt because what do they do? They get hit by their own guys. They run into their own people. Steelers rush four. Marino has it tipped, and that's incomplete. So Miami cannot take advantage of this late possession, and the Steelers are going to get the ball back. And, and I think we saw right there with them coming with four people uh, a bit of a change in the Steelers' defensive philosophy. With, without Deion Figures uh, being healthy, with Rod Woodson gone, I don't think this is a defense that can take as many chances. Ray Seals' right elbow blocks the ball. But they are really going to need Dick LeBeau, the new defensive coordinator, I think has to play it a little closer to the vest than he might like with the change in the secondary. John Kidd to kick. Andre Hastings is back there. Hastings fields at the 13-yard line and has no blocking and is tackled at the 17-yard line. Well, has already touched on the fact the Steelers do not have a timeout. They had to take that with Chad Brown being down. I agree with you, Dan, but I think what you have got to do constantly to Marino is what the came in tonight 
hoping to do, and that is change up, give him one look and come with something else and hope that he doesn't figure it out because given the time and uh, he, he would really pick you apart. How many times have we set up here and just marvel at the way he can pick a defense apart? And yet, this is the third week of the season, and I think you'll agree with me, this Miami offense is nowhere close to being in sync yet. They just don't seem to be operating very smoothly. Too many different people. It'll yeah. come, though. From the 17, they give it to John L. Williams. He picks up a couple of oh, them. On a yard line, loses the football. And Jeff Cross of Miami has recovered. Rue. Officials looking at each other, and nobody said, I blew the whistle, so it's Miami's ball. Larry Nemers there is, is flashing the two sign. What? Let's see if we can see the ball oh, come the out. Ball, yeah. There it is. It is in play, as they say. Jeff Cross is down yep. there grubbing for it. Yep. Well, on a scale of one to ten, looks like the looks like it uh, was Trace Armstrong yeah. that got his hand mm -hmm. on the ball. Another big play by Trace. But on a scale of one to ten, in terms of mistakes. That's about a 9.5. It is. It'll be a 10 if Miami yeah. gets into the end zone as Kirby picks up about three to the 18. Just when it, Pittsburgh's defense made a stand, didn't allow the Dolphins to get that last score before halftime. Now they're under the gun again. A moral victory for Pittsburgh here is to hold them to a field goal. A minute to go and two timeouts for Marino. Second and seven. Pump fake, pressure. Throws it away and it's incomplete. He was in the arms of Chad Brown. And Brown hurt again now. Brown I think Larry went, went off two minutes ago and now he referee Larry Nemers came in and dropped a flag. Yeah. He may call this intentional grounding on Dan Marino. No grounding. Yep. Number 13. It's a 10 yard penalty. Loss him down. It'll be third down. Don't <laughs> Larry doesn't want to hear it. Dan, I know you're going to pass Fran Targenton, but I don't, I don't care. <laughs> when you are in the pocket, and technically Dan Marino is still between the tackles there, the rule has not changed. If you get rid of the football and the intent is to evade a sack, and that's clearly what happened there, that's intentional grounding. So it's going to be third and 17 at the 28-yard line, 54 seconds remaining in the first half. Miami leading 10 to 3. They have to get to the 11 to convert. The catch is made by Kirby. Touchdown. They'll dance with the devil once. And you might get away with it. Dance with him twice, and you'll pay. And Terry Kirby is back, breaking under, underneath, taking it right across the middle. Marina with a lot of time to get rid of the ball, and hits Kirby right in stride. And it's an injured Chad Brown, I believe, that's trying to chase Kirby. Brown, who's been nicked and dinged, I think is the guy that's trying to stay up with Terry Kirby. Well, if he was, he shouldn't have been. Stojanovic for the point after. The Steelers have turned the ball over three times on two picks and a fumble, and Miami has cashed in every time 17 points. It's a courageous play by Chad Brown to even be in this game. Let me see if he's the good. Yeah, see him 94? He's locked up one-on-one -on -one with Terry Kirby, and he's just no match with oh, trying to well, stay with Kirby. First of all, he's just been hurt. Yeah. A second, he could no way he's going to be able to stay with Kirby out of the backfield. No, if you see he's down as a rusher, he's in a three-point stance, and then you're asking him from that three-point stance as a defensive tackle to cover a back coming out of the backfield. You know he almost got a hand on it. Oh, no, that's, that's asking the impossible. That's asking the impossible, and the Steelers pay dearly for that call. And a Good effort by Kirby. We've already talked about his coming back from knee surgery. Getting better each week. Spots the end zone, lowers the head, and goes for it. 
They say it's a chess game that you try to do something and if the other team counters it perfectly, this is this is exactly what is that scenario. Miami has the perfect call. Marino goes to the perfect guy to exploit a weakness in the Steeler defense. And I'm sorry, there's nothing you can say to Chad Brown that 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 would that he could have done differently. You can have Chad Brown covering him uh, coming out of the backfield. If he's in the standing flat, up, and if he's coming over into his own kind of coverage, but you can't have him man for man. Not from defensive tackle, I don't think. 333 career touchdown passes for the great one as Ernie Mills gets upended at the 27-yard line. And the Dolphins with a lot of emotion on special teams. Robert Wilson, who was flagged for a late hit before, comes in with the early hit this time. You know, it, it, I just can't get into guys, though, making a tackle, which is what they're paid to do, and then running 25 yards downfield. You know, yeah, I, I like emotion, and I think it's a, I think it's fun. But this this deal of separating yourself from the rest of your teammates and feeling that you got to go on a 20-yard jaunt after just making a tackle on a kickoff, <laughs> uh, you know, it's I don't know, break it to you, but you're paid to do that. It would only be 10 yards on a regional telecast. Yancey Thigpen is out of bounds up at the 46. You're right. It's Monday Night Football. Before long, they'll be taking victory laps. <laughs> They look like Hale Irwin going around the green at the USL. <laughs> Chad Brown talked about him for what a tremendous year he's having. Pro Bowl a year ago. They were asking an awful lot of him to cover Kirby out of the backfield. And what it really is is just gambling on the part of the Pittsburgh Steelers to get the coverage on the outside, picking up certain receivers every now and then, taking a chance and putting a linebacker on a key receiver, trying to get away with it. That time Marino read it perfectly. They didn't get away with it. Steelers don't have a timeout trying to at least get into field goal range. And the catch is made by John L. Williams, and he has to get out of bounds. I mean, that's got to be priority number one, and he does it at the 42-yard line. The longtime veteran, Williams, in well, his 10th year. He's had back-to-back back -to -back bonehead plays. That, that's a terrible play. Now you've got to spike the ball. But, oh, and, and it's almost a fumble. Why not? If the ball comes out on the way back, it would have been a fumble, but Nevers is going to give him the break here. Head to the locker room, Bill. Ooh. Head to the locker room. Regroup. <laughs> but if you're Williams on that play, I mean, yeah, it's, he's, he sees the first down marker, but that's almost irrelevant there. Out of bounds is, is what has to happen. Tom Zach's already had some strange things happen to him tonight. He lost control of one out of the dirt earlier. Looks like he lost control of that one. Let's take a look at, at Williams again. He's got to know what's on the clock. He makes a good effort. A fine a catch. Fine catch. He's got to get out of bounds, and he didn't do it. 11 seconds left at the 41-yard line. Now, what they need is a completion and out of bounds, and probably too late for that on the next play. Johnny Barnes, the intended receiver, because if you complete a, a pass in the middle of the field, you're not going to have time to set up a Johnson field goal attempt. And they're not going to give you much of an opportunity to, to complete it near the sidelines. And that ball hits Sean Hill right in the right in the hip. If he turns around and sees that thing coming, that's that's another interception. You need an eight-yard completion, trips right, and out of bounds in five seconds. Or into the end zone. You need John Elway throwing right. this thing. <laughs> they're looking for the penalty on yeah, this. That's one. what they're going for. A prayer. Is it answered? No. Incomplete. All of the Dolphins there. Vincent winds up with the ball out of the end zone. And the half end. Pittsburgh turns the ball over three times and each time Miami cashes in for two touchdowns and a field goal. And at the end of the first half in Miami it's the Dolphins 17 the Steelers three and back we come after this message and a word from our ABC stations. The Toyota Halftime Report, brought to you by the 1995 Toyota 4Runner. It's where civilization is headed. From our New York studios, here now, Brent Musburger. Welcome, everybody. There's a major story unfolding off the field tonight. Late today, the National Football League appeared in federal court here in New York City and filed a $300 million lawsuit against the Dallas Cowboys and owner Jerry Jones. You may have heard lately that Jones had negotiated independent contracts with Pepsi-Cola and Nike. 
The National Football League claims that this damages their NFL properties contracts, which until now have been shared by all the teams in the league. The owners are meeting tomorrow morning in Atlanta. Our Peter King is there, and he has more on this unfolding story. Brent, at 4 o'clock today, as confirmed to me by league spokesman Joe Brown, the NFL went to war with its flagship franchise. The league sued the Cowboys and owner Jerry Jones for $300 million, just days before he was to announce his third independent marketing deal, this one with American Express. Now, here was the last straw. Jones and Nike's Phil Knight on the sidelines two weeks ago in New York. This absolutely infuriated the league. Now, the suit asked Jones to stop making his maverick deals. Peter, where is Jones? Uh, has he arrived in Atlanta? Has anybody spoken with him? Well, Brent, let me leave you with words from Jerry Jones. I spoke to him on his car phone tonight just before he boarded a plane to come to Atlanta. He just heard of this suit, and he told me defiantly, we will prevail. And, Peter, if he does prevail, it will change the face of the league as we now know it because the NFL insists that sharing its revenue is what keeps the small market teams like the Green Bay Packers competitive with the rest of the league. Now, on the field, the Detroit Lions are reeling, 0-3, controversy swirling around their head coach, Wayne Fonts. At his news conference today, Fonts fired back at some of his media critics. A lot of coaches have stood here. In every place in the National Football League, they're going to get heat. Now, if you guys think you're all here to get me upset, make me nervous, I'm my head's up here. And I'm going to go take that field Wednesday and do the best job I can do with my staff and this team. And I'm not going to put my head down. You're going to print what you want to print and put what you want to put in the paper and show it on TV. Wayne Fonts is alive. Alive and looking at the world champions who are next. Oh, baby, you're 0-3, and now it's Steve Young to Jerry Rice coming to the Motor City for a Monday nighter. You know, earlier tonight, we talked to Steve Young, and of course, as we've all been reading, with the addition of Deion Sanders in that flashy contract, now the lawsuit, the Dallas Cowboys are under the gun, and we asked Steve about their bid to win a Super Bowl. Well, we kind of were in the same position last year. When you're the returning champ, you have a lot of pressure on you. And uh, we were picked last year by a lot of people, and so we had to go prove it. And we had a lot of, uh, we were kind of the hunter instead of the hunted. And so we've kind of switched positions with them. And we've got to handle it uh, uh, because every week we're going to play in everyone's Super Bowl. Steve Wayne Fonts, under fire. No surprise there. Lions are 0 and 3. Uh, how dangerous does that make them next Monday night? Well, Brent, you know, in the NFL, everyone's dangerous. Uh, but this is particularly dangerous because uh, they have a lot to prove. They still, I'm sure, think that they have a great season. They can. It's still early. And I expect a loud, uh, ferocious uh, time up there. Uh, and historically, when we've played at the Silverdome, it's a, it's a fierce battle. So we expect our hands full, for sure. Yeah, and Barry Sanders has something to prove. That's next Monday night. Coming up next, Al Michaels will speak with Dan Marino of the Miami Dolphins. all its power, with all that it is capable of, with all its refinements and its reputation, imagine the places it can take you. The Toyota 4Runner, where civilization is headed. Wednesday, will Ellen stay and rebuild a bookstore? My dream is out there. Or take a new road to success? You see speed. Ellen, then Drew's got a gal. Well, what do you think? Nice Heine. But will dating a workmate cost him his job? Isn't there any way we could see each other? If I date you, I'll have to date everybody. The Drew Carey Show, after Ellen, Wednesday on ABC. Wherever you go in South Florida, fans feel this is the year for Dan Marino to get back to the Super Bowl. Last night, Al Michaels caught up with the Miami Dolphin quarterback. You know as well as anyone the basic storyline around here this year. Shula is 65. Marino is 34. All of the parts seem to be in place. It may be now or it won't happen. Do you sense that? I sense that there's, yes, there's certain urgency uh, that people are putting on this team because of the circumstances and the economics of the game today, the way there's salary cap and people are moving. We have uh, 
you know, a pretty good core group of players, and, and we were able to get some new free agents that really helped us improve. And we'll have, you know, we, we're going to have a chance. But, yeah, there's, there's nothing wrong with having that sense of urgency because uh, the way the, the game is today and, and the, how people are moving and the, the economics and the salary cap. Thirteen years with the Dolphins, Dan. The record book will soon be yours. You will own every salient record. What would be the happiest moment for you in your Dolphin career? Um, I think there's a, there's a combination. I think the happiest moment is going to come. I think it hasn't come yet. Uh, I've had a lot of great times playing in 13 years, and I think that I've, you know, if there's been a lot of great accomplishments. Got to a Super Bowl when I was younger. Uh, you know, set a lot of records. But I think the happiest moment is going to come, and hopefully that's going to be winning a championship. Two years ago, you tore your Achilles tendon. Last year, you hobbled through the year, even though it was a very good year. Now you say you feel terrific. Terrific enough to play how much longer? I think as long as I can be effective and I can be play at a, you know, at a certain level and, and help teams win, I'm, I'm going to want to play football. It's very clear when I asked him that question about his happiest moment as a Dolphin, he could have picked any of 100, but he said it is still to come. And to me, Brent, that speaks volumes. He wants to win a Super Bowl badly. The irony is if he does, it will probably be because the Dolphins have the best defense they've had in years. Yeah, Al, that defense has really been impressive here today, and I think the Steelers miss Rod Woodson, especially in a game against Dan Marino. The second half is coming up on ABC. Onward and upward, the awards, the honors for the Toyota Camry continue to rise, and the car that's become the gold standard can now be leased for as little as $2.29 a month which includes automatic transmission, air conditioning, power windows and door locks, and more. The new 1995 Toyota Camry lease, starting at just $2.29 a month. So low for a car that aims so high. The Toyota Halftime Report has been brought to you by Toyota and their full line of quality cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. Stay tuned for the second half kickoff after this from our ABC stations. Tomorrow at 8, 7 central, the season premiere you've been waiting for. Becky's back. Where in the hell have you been? I was getting this. Well, it took you long enough. Seems like you've been gone for three years. The season premiere of Roseanne. Then catch the new show premiere USA Today calls a winner. Have you made any decisions yet? Never to wear my hair like that. <laughs> Hudson Street premieres right after Roseanne tomorrow. From the Eyewitness News team, these are working stories. Good evening, I'm Christy Krueger. And I'm Dwight Lauderdale. Here's some of what we're working on for the Eyewitness News Night Beat. Relief is pouring in tonight for those Caribbean islands battered by Hurricane Maryland. We'll have much more on the damage and what's being done to help. The search goes on tonight for Jimmy Rice. The nine-year-old South Dade boy has been missing for more than a week now. While the search has been scaled back, his parents have not lost hope. We'll have the very latest. In sports, they're both 2-0, but you know after tonight, somebody's going to have a loss on their record. The Dolphins and the Steelers right now at Joe Robbie Stadium, Monday Night Football on Channel 10. Tennis, Steffi Graf's father remains in a German prison after losing an appeal to be released after his arrest for tax evasion. The German court rejected Peter Graf's offer to put up over $10 million in bond. And in basketball, the Heat's new coach, Pat Riley, says he wants to sign a free agent center to get some bulk as the Heat prepares to open training camp. Dwight? Plus, we'll go behind the scenes of Murder One, one of the season's hottest new shows. That's tonight, right after the game. We're proud to announce that lease terms on the 1995 Trooper are not only the lowest they've been all year, but at $2.99 a month and zero down, they're really something to think about. Like, how do you actually put zero down? And if you put zero down, how does anyone know you really put it down? And if you wash your pants with zero down in the pocket, will you find it later in the dryer? It's a paradox inside of a riddle wrapped in an enigma. I pledge allegiance to the Cinderella Jets, the Steel Curtain Niners, and my beloved Buccaneers. To Coach Shula for President Bledsoe's arm! Bionic, you know, and Bolitnikov sticky fingers. I pledge with my sweatshirt, my jersey, my heart to one league for all with nut guts and hail Mary, grilled sausage and cake skin for a ball. Who do you pledge allegiance to? Keep it on 10. 
start the second half at Joe Robbie Stadium. Pittsburgh kicks off to Miami. Johnson sends it down to the 19. A very short kick, and Irving Spikes takes it back out to the 35-yard line with the Dolphins up 17 to 3. Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Dodge. The more things change, the more things look like the new Dodge. AT&T, your true choice. And Red Dog Beer, bold yet smooth, unusually easy to drink. You are your own dog. <laughs> what do you want me to do? <laughs> you are your 17 own to underdog. three. <laughs> I don't know. If you look at one of the scoreboards here at Joe Robbie, it's 18 to three. <laughs> I was a little puzzled. I kept thinking yeah. about how do they get to 18? At the 35-yard line, Dan Marino back to throw. And a great catch made up at the 50-yard line. Eric Green. He was waiting for this moment. Let Not go the, by the Steelers, and the new Dolphin makes his first reception of the night. Not the dexterity and the fluid movements that you would expect from a tight end who's played before in excess of 300 pounds. That 280 is probably very generous, but look at this piece of athleticism. Up in the air, beautiful soft hands, controlling the ball. That's, that's, a, that's a fine play by Irving Fryer, much less a 285 or 290-pound tight end, Eric Green. From the 47, Terry Kirby. And Parnell Lake still can't bring them down. And Kirby Hello. fights his way for a first down. Uh, at the very beginning of this game, on a couple of plays, Terry Kirby was a little tentative in running the football. I started to mention it. And then later on, you started to see him get the confidence on the touchdown pass when he drilled himself into the end zone. You knew he was back. And right there, that's the Terry Kirby we watched before he hurt that knee a year ago. Just a beautifully blocked play to the right side of the Dolphins offense. Keith Sims with a good kick out block. Then Kirby did the rest of it. Steelers on the verge of getting blown out. Yeah. Marino throws, catch is made, and that is Eric Green making the second catch. And this is a pretty critical defensive stand for Pittsburgh here, already down by 14 with an offense that's not going to light up a scoreboard. Well, we're watching a defensive series. We haven't seen the stand yet. Yeah. <laughs> the stand uh, for Steeler fans is hopefully yet to come. Again, look at the athleticism oh, of the man, 6'5 and 280. Don't you remember that first Tripped time up. we saw him at Three Rivers Stadium when he was a rookie? He came jogging out for warm-up. Our jaws just simultaneously dropped. <laughs> Second and two, and a little misdirection, but they ran right into Lloyd and Green. And that's the wrong direction. Kirby thrown for a loss. Whatever uh, Greg Lloyd is telling him, I don't think it's, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I don't think an apology was uh, in that verbiage that he was uh, tossing Terry Kirby's way. Greg Lloyd is just about the most intense player I've been around. Like I, the, the warm ups down there, you don't want to get too near him. This, this begins before he comes out of the field and continues right through the game. The guy's a player. Just plain old a player. Third down, six. Here he comes. They pick him up. Byers took him out of the play, and Marino converts on a catch by McDuffie. First down. And you're right, Al. It was Byers, who weighs about 250 himself, stepping up. Greg Lloyd had about a seven or eight-yard sprint right to him. Myers, it wasn't the prettiest thing, but he kept him away from Marino. Here he comes with Greg Lloyd. Byers steps up. He tries a spin move on Byers, and Byers right back into him again. Oh, Byers, 40 left in the third. Byers has played a lot of H-back and a lot of tight end for Philadelphia before coming here. Now Parmalee takes it to the 20-yard line, gain of two. Second down and eight. You know, just when you see how Miami is 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 in this uh, series running the football, it's just a, again another illustration of their wonderful depth. Parmalee is running the ball. Kirby's being effective. Keith Byers. They've still got Irving Spikes, who hasn't been a big part of this game, but he's been in. And they like him. Oh yeah, yeah. He's everybody. Quick, he's quick. Everybody on their roster contributes. Second and eight, Chad Brown not starting the second half. Jerry Osavsky taking his spot at linebacker and caught in the backfield by Ray Seals is Bernie Parmalee. Seals, one of three guys in the league right now who did not attend college. Eric Swan, the tackle in Arizona, and Darren Bennett, the punter in San Diego, who is an Aussie, are the others. Well, a blown combination block on the left side by Sims and Webb. 
two guys that have been together now for six years but but they let seals come right between them and get in on the play very uncharacteristic for this pretty well oiled Dolphins offensive line third down 11 Dolphins leading by 14 early third quarter key play for the Steelers Lake on a blitz they pick him up and the pass is caught by Kirby at the 21 yard line and so Pittsburgh will limit Miami to a field goal attempt it, it only gained a yard but what a quick release on the part of Marino he was about to get sacked and he just flipped that like a dart well it's a beautiful play by Keith Sims the left guard because he gets all the way out to pick up the blitz coming off the corner Sims is already on the ground you see that he knocked Carnell Lake down but the Pittsburgh pressure still got to Marino 39 yard attempt John Kidd holding Pete Stoyanovich to kick it and the former Indiana Hoosier boots it through Miami's opening drive of the second half results in three 938 left in the third Miami 20 Pittsburgh three. Black and Decker presents How Would You Fix It? How would you fix the quarterback's headaches tonight? Get a little bit more padding inside those helmets, but the way these guys are hitting tonight, I don't know that that would help. I would duck when the other team came in. Avoid Greg Lloyd, take two aspirin and see the doctor in the morning. A nice rub down. Ice it down, keep the ball on the ground. A nice bubble bath, work that headache out. Give him a damn Marino aspirin, which is a quick release. Get a bigger, stronger offensive line in front of him. That's how I'd fix it. Oh, well, I'm the kind of light for any job you do. Any job that needs three hands, but you've got only two. Cause I'm the snake light from Black and Decker. I'll get around, around, around. I'm the snake light. It has vents in 22 locations. Storage compartments in 12 locations. 10 speakers in 8 locations. Cup holders in 14 locations and lights in over 20 locations. So now you know the secret to the new Dodge Caravan's user-friendly design. Location, location, location. The new Dodge Caravan. Just as original as the original. In any business, you've got to fight to stay on top. But for an assassin, the competition can be murder. Sylvester Stallone, Antonio Banderas. No more chit chat. Assassins, directed by Richard Donner. Rated R. Starts Friday, October 6th. Greg Lloyd and the Pittsburgh Steelers, the defensive unit, anchored by Lloyd and that man, Kevin Green. <laughs> I mean, that is a do. Uh, they're doing their job tonight, too. They are, you've got a high-powered offense that they have they've kept pretty much in check. Yep. They just have got to get some kind of offensive support, and they're not getting it. Exactly, the offense turning it over three times. Miami cashing in on each occasion. That's a short kick fielded up at the 28-yard line. This is Oliver Gibson. And uh, remember, he lined up as a fullback in a short yardage set before and runs it back to the 38. Bad kick by Stoyanovic. Regional college football action coming your way this Saturday, 3.30 Eastern and 12.30 Pacific. Highlighted by number three, Texas A&M taking on number seven, Colorado, Ohio State, Pittsburgh, Mississippi State, Tennessee, UCLA, Washington State, some of the other games. And we go to Detroit next week, specifically Pontiac. Silverdome is the site. 49ers undefeated against the Detroit Lions. And you saw Rain Fox at halftime and the pressure building in the Motor City as Van Morris picks up a yard up to the 39 yard line second and nine Marco Coleman in on the stop well last year uh, in the 16 games nine times the Steelers went through a game without a turnover an all-time NFL record in fact exceeding the old mark by two and tonight well it's the whole story three turnovers and 17 Miami points off the T.O.s usually is Second and nine, Tom Zack under pressure, loses the football. It's a loose ball, Miami's got it. Stripped Four. by Chris Singleton, recovered by Tim Bowens. 
there is a limit to how long you can stand in the pocket before you can expect to be hit. And Good I think coverage. Mike Tomczak exceeded that limit, Frank. Good coverage downfield. No place to put it. Pressure loses off to the left. He's got to know now he's going to be in deep trouble from behind. And number one pick from a year ago, Tim Bowens, who's turning into an outstanding defensive tackle, gets the recovery. And the first, fourth turnover for the Dolphins. At the 32-yard line, Miami first and 10. 8.45 left in the third. Marino going for the quick strike. And it is incomplete. Irving Fryer, the intended receiver, blanketed by Willie Williams. Second down and 10. Chris Singleton was the player for the Dolphins who actually hit the arm of Mike Tomczak, so he'll be credited with the sack. That, uh, that will go down as a sack and the turnover, but there's just a limit to how long you can stand in there before you know the pressure has to catch up with you. Singleton finally healthy this year. He's been struggling at a broken leg a year ago. There you see him flipping it away, and Bowen's making the recovery. Second and ten. Myers makes the catch, but for negative yardage, Carnell Lake rides him out of bounds. Did that play not come immediately following us showing the graphic about Steeler turnovers? Mm -hmm. the it was the play. very next play, was it not? Absolutely. This is not recorded. Yeah, people are going to think it's on tape here. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's Dan Marino, the actor. I hope you're with us at the beginning of the game when we took a look back at Ace Ventura, pet detective, and was part of her opening. And I don't know whether he's going to be in. They've got a new one coming out. Jim Carrey does Ace Ventura's sequel in November. And I wonder if Dan's going to be in that one. That might have been Ace Ventura going by in that airplane flying yeah. underneath the blimp. That's the sequel. Deuce Ventura. Third down and oh. nine. Oh, and look out as Marino loses the football, and it is recovered by. Eventually, we'll get the call clearly Miami now because they're signaling fourth down. No foul on the play. It was supposed to be a beanbag for a fumble. Fourth down. Well, instead of the beanbag, we saw the flag go in, and a little mistake. And Keith Sims is shaken Ooh. up. The uh, the great left guard of the Miami Dolphins, uh, the number two pick back in 1990. Injury timeout, 7:44 to go in the third. Because you spend so much time in here, we applied the same technology that makes today's finest homes so comfortable. Windows that minimize solar heating. Dual zone heating and cooling with separate temperature controls. And air ducts in the front room and family room. All the comforts of home with no lawn to mow. The new Dodge Caravan, just as original as the original. AT&T now offers you the only program with savings on all kinds of calls. No matter where you make them or who you make them to. No competitor single plan offers this broader reach. Introducing AT&T True Reach Savings. You'll save on every type of call on your AT&T phone bill to anyone, anywhere in the U.S. Sign up and save 25% every time you spend just $25 a month. True Reach. That's your true choice. AT&T. for fire he came across something even hotter <laughs> while tacos and burritos are back at taco bell starting at 59 cents discover the hottest thing man has ever known Lois and Clark take a dream vacation, but their romantic rendezvous turns into a nightmare when a maniac sets a trap for Superman. It is him. An all-new Lois and Clark, Sunday. Keith Sims back on the Dolphin sideline. He got a real shot to the head as he was going for the ball. He and Greg Lloyd collided. And he looks helmet to right helmet. Though. Yeah, he looks like he's okay, but... I think he may have a pounder going right now. Now a 52-yarder for Pete Stoyanovich on fourth down. They spotted the 42. He's got a great leg, but 
He missed it to the right. Kicked a 58 yarder in the playoff game we had here in 90 uh, against Kansas City. Wild card game. Mm -hmm. 723 remaining in the third. It remains 20 to 3. Miami. Hey, uh, Red Dog. Why? Do you ever wonder why we're here? Where? You know, here. Why we exist. No. Well, how come? I got better things to think about. But why are we the way we are? I mean, I'd give anything to be as big as you. True. You ain't big, but you're real quick. <laughs> quick? Yeah. I guess it all evens out then, huh? Well, that might be pushing it. Red Dog. Hey, hey Red Dog. Yeah? Full moon tomorrow night. I'm there, buddy. It seems ironic that trucks so diligently engineered to be quiet would have so much volume. Dodge Ram and Dodge Ram Club Cab, the roomiest pickups on the road. The rules have changed. There are seven deadly sins, Captain. Gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, pride, lust, and envy. Seven. You can expect five more of these. You want to come take a look at this? Oh, good. He's two murders away from completing his masterpiece. Let's finish it. Brad Pitt. Ah! Morgan Freeman. This isn't going to have a happy ending. Seven rated R. Starts Friday. Nobody does it better. The 49ers meet the Lions next week on ABC's Monday Night Football. They continue to attend to Keith Sims on the sidelines, checking various body parts to see how they're working. He took quite a shot to the head. Pittsburgh begins from the 42-yard line, and this drive commences with a Bam Morris one-yard carry. The 42-yard line, the drive start here. This is the best field position Pittsburgh has had at the start of a drive tonight. Well you wonder can the Steelers get anything mounted offensively tonight. They have just been borderline pathetic to this point. No continuity nothing maybe a couple first downs and then they self destruct and turn the ball over. If they're going to do it they better do it quick. On second and ten Yancey Thigpen catches it. He's tackled at the 44 of Miami by Gene Atkins first down. You think back this game started very promisingly for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They took they're going down the field. They're, they're putting first downs together. They're marching on Miami and you think to yourself boy it looks like uh, they are really clicking this evening and and that was that was the end of it. There's their starting quarterback Neil O'Donnell sideline with the broken finger. He will not play next week against Minnesota. He may play in two weeks against San Diego. Tom Zach. I think he was down, wasn't he? Well, Larry Nemers is well, simply saying incomplete and no grounding. That well, was a heck of an effort to make that look like an attempt. And Almost looked like his, he was on a knee when he threw the ball. Tom Olivadotti on the sidelines is screaming that he was down, number one. <laughs> and if not, well, I guess he. Let's see. The attempt to get it away would be he was out of the pocket. He was, he way was down. definitely down. He was crawling. He was you're right. It's such a funny scene. Oliver Dottie is screaming. He's screaming at the back judge, who's the guy who's furthest away from the play. But you'll scream at any <laughs> official you can find. Now he's up to the line judge. Second and ten. And it's Morris to the 41-yard line. If it's anybody's call, it's the referee who's standing right in the offensive back well defensive coordinators love stats and that would have been another sack for his defensive team Ooh, and Brian Cox is yep. limping off the field yep that's Marco Coleman number 90 you know he's he should have gotten credit for a sack and he didn't and Mike Tomzak is having one rough night Brian Cox comes off the field and it's third down and seven at the 41 yard line five and a half to go in the third 17 point Miami lead and Tom Zach had big pen open at the 23 yard line and couldn't get it to him. I've 
I played on some offensive teams that, that turned in performances like this and, and when you go walking to the sidelines you really try to avoid your defensive team as they're coming out onto the field because you you don't want to see them and, and you know darn well they don't want to see you it's really bad when the yeah. defense passes the offensive yeah. unit tells them the offensive unit coming onto the yeah. field go out and hold them a while yeah and, and look at that look at that display of cohesiveness by the Steelers defense they know they got to make something happen Here's the kick by Ron Stark, and it floats into the arms of O.J. McDuffie at the 11-yard line. Five of course, you're, team left in the third. you're faced with making something happen. Why, why does it have to be against Dan Marino and the Dolphins? There are a lot of compelling reasons for buying a Dodge Ram. A potent line of Magnum engines, the most available towing of any pickup. Payload capacity of up to two and a half tons, but perhaps the weightiest argument is this. Dodge Ram has higher resale than Ford, Chevy, or GMC. The rules have indeed changed. Just off the Pacific Coast Highway, there's a place where America ends and the Pacific begins all right outside your window. It's the Seven Gables Inn overlooking Monterey Bay. Seven Gables, 14 rooms, one spectacular view. So if you go, bring your wide angle lens and your Visa card because the Seven Gables Inn will take your breath away. But they won't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. I think you can afford your own. It's not a dream, not a nightmare, but worse. The altered state called night terror. It affects thousands who may not even know it. 2020, Friday. In Miami, Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff, and Lynn Swan. 516 remaining, third quarter. Dolphins 20 to 3, leading the Steelers, trying to remain unbeaten. Miami next week off and then the week after at Cincinnati where it's Shula against Shula from the 11 yard line first down Bernie Parmelee cuts it back takes it out to the 13 for a gain of a couple and let's check in with Lynn Swan Al if uh, Darius Rucker doesn't mean anything to you how about who the in the blowfish that's a man standing here with and right lead singer it's a big Miami fan you're playing golf with Dan uh, they're gonna adopt you as a good luck charm here I think they should uh, Dan's a good friend out and uh, yeah if they keep win like this when I'm here I think she's gonna bring me every game you're a big fan how important was it to you singing the national anthem this afternoon this evening it was extremely important I mean it was the greatest thing I've done in a long time it was really cool glad to have you here hope you enjoy the rest of the ball game thank, thank you, you. Thank you. It is second down and eight as Marino guns one too high intended for Keith Byers. And it will be third down and eight. Similar play to the one in which Kirby was the receiver on a uh, touchdown connection in the first half. And a pass I'm sure that many times Keith Byers has gone up and come down with. It would have been uh, a difficult catch but he is one of the sure handed receivers around. Let's take a look at it again. He was in the zone, in the middle, he was there. Dan had it just a little high. But I'm sure Keith would be one to tell you that he should have caught that ball. Third and eight of the 14. Four and a half left, third quarter. 20 to three, Miami. I'll tell you one thing. The Steelers coming with a four-man rush. Getting nowhere with it. Irving Fryer getting a first down up at the 24 yard line That's if you don't get in his no. face he's going to look over the field and find somebody if you didn't look at anything else except the pass protection and the lack thereof of a pass rush this you know this is going to be a completion you can just book this as a completion the only question is to whom look at the blocking by this offensive wall look at marino look around yeah i'm sorry this is going to be completed it's just who's the lucky guy that gets it in this case it was irving fryer and that's blocking minus Keith Sims. Burt Widener gets plugged in at left guard and does the job. 
Here's Bernie Parmalee over the left side after the 33-yard line. I'll tell you, over that left side, when they've got Webb and Sims and Eric Green as the tight end, that's a pretty good wall to run behind. You know, you have to sense, there's a little sense that maybe the Steelers' defensive unit, they've been doing a lot of dealing, they've been doing a lot of blitzing, maybe just wearing down a little bit. There comes the helmet. I think that's Keevan Henry, number 76. He loses his hat, making the tackle. You know, it's a tough enough game with a helmet. It gets a whole lot tougher without one. Second and two, 34 yard line, formally to the outside. And the flag comes in at the end of the play after we've been stopped for no game by Deion Figures. Chad Brown involved in the action. Larry Nemers makes the call. Five yard face mask, 94 defense. Five yard penalty will make it a first down. That hurts. Chad Brown. These are the things you do yeah. when you when you get a little tired. It's a very warm night. They've been doing a lot of dealing, a lot of blitzing, and the kind of unconscious things you do. Well, that's just reaching out, trying to make the play. I mean, that just happens. And boy, that's that is about as inadvertent as they get. Well, he overruns the play. Yeah. He tries to play it back into action. Yeah. He tries to get it off as quickly as he possibly can. But as the official, you see it, you got to call. First and 10, 39 yard line, 245 left in the period. Chase from the rear still gets it away. Mike Williams makes the catch. First down at the Steeler. But Dan Marino still down. Ooh, Greg Dan Moore Marino hit from behind, and he's telling his guys, stay away from me. How ironic, a Miami kid playing for Pittsburgh, chasing the Pittsburgh kid playing for Miami. Well, Dave Lloyd. And that's right what you have. He all week long. And whether he should have been doing it or not, I don't think he really intended anything by it. We were trying to knock Marino into next week. Oh, boy. It's not a good thing to be saying, a good thing for the game or anything else. And when something like this happens, it's going well, to affect really poorly. I don't know. Greg Lloyd. From what I see, it wasn't a case where Lloyd speared him or anything no, like that. He's just chasing him, trying I mean, to make the fact play. That he was saying it all week long, yeah. he would have been much better off not. The backup quarterback is Bernie Kosar. This is a scene that, well, the last time Miami saw it, it was a ruptured Achilles in Cleveland two years ago that put him out for the season. Oh, and it lands right on the right shoulder. Dan Marino driven in. And look at him. Look at him grabbing. Look at him grabbing Greg Lloyd. I, I, the only conclusion you can draw to this is that Dan Marino was hurting when that happened. But not so hurting he couldn't display a little anger you think there's not a competitive fire burning in Dan Marino uh, they're booing Greg Lloyd but that was not a bad play by Greg Lloyd it's just they're booing him for what happened the week leading up to tonight's game well sure it's been a big story in both Pittsburgh and Miami now the good news is they grabbed Marino's right arm to pick him up and he's leaning over and he picked up his helmet or attempted to with his right arm and he has to come oh. out for one play. I think he'll be right back in. The, the oxygen well. has just come back in South Florida. Yes, sir. People were holding their breath for a while. I think Dan's hurt. I, I, I think that he's, I think he's banged up, but he's not, it doesn't appear that he's hurt badly. He can't get his right arm to protect himself out. He can't get it out in front to protect himself because Lloyd had a hold of it. Watch Dan with the left hand. <laughs> you son of a gun. Yeah, sure. <laughs> or something close to that. Bernie Kosar is the quarterback now at the 46-yard line. And he goes right to the air and slings one that is caught near the first down marker by Irving Fryer. And he gives some grief to somebody along the Steelers' sideline. Tremendous play by Irving to get his feet down and concentrate on the ball coming in. Great athletic move, and Bernie had some juice on that ball. Not known for the powerful arm to the sidelines. He had something on this, and he hasn't even warmed up. Watch Fryer now. He's got to get both down. And the beautiful move. <laughs> the first nice. pick in the draft back in, amazingly, 1984. Boy, look at him get them both. That's that's beautiful. Ballet move. Yes, sir. At the 35-yard line. Green sets up on the right side. 
Sozar goes to the right side. McDuffie slips the tackle. Oh, Shane McDuffie is out of bounds at the 23. Another Dolphin first down. Pittsburgh better get Marino back in there. Well, you know, it's just what I was talking about earlier in, in, in one of the big stories concerning this Dolphins team. It's their depth. It's how they have good players behind really good players. And that's this is no better illustration right now than watching Bernie Kozar with all his experience, all his skills coming into a game to replace the starting quarterback. And total domination here in this third quarter by the Dolphins. 110 left in the period. Miami leading by 17. Lloyd comes in from the other side. A flag goes down. He may have been offside. It's Bernie Parmalee to the 19-yard line. In fairness to Lloyd, I mean, that sack is the kind of play we've seen a million times. He was also involved with Lloyd in that play in preseason that cost him $12,000, or at least that's a pending fine to hit on Brett Favre. Defense, number 95, offside at the snap. Five-yard penalty. <laughs> First down. Well, at least there's great awareness here among the Dolphins fans. They, they know who Greg Lloyd is. <laughs> they certainly know who number 95 is. And on the sidelines, Marino is up. I, and I think he's perfectly all right. Well, I, I'm not sure he's perfectly all right. He, he looks a little rough around the edges. Good look there at Lloyd going away from you into that neutral zone. Well, at least there was a trace of a smile yes. on Dan's yeah. face. So. The worst he's, thing in the world is he separated. Well, he's right picking now. things up with his right arm. He's yeah, howling himself with his right arm, and he just threw a football with his right arm. So they were looking uh, at the right arm, not the left arm. That was what we were concerned about. First and five, and that's a juggling catch by McDuffie and a little magic that takes it to the 11-yard line. Well, he landed on his right arm. Boy, this is an in-your-face drive yeah. too. You lose 13 at midfield, and to bring in. Number 19, and he moves the football team. I, uh, if Bernie Kozar uh, continues to direct this drive for points, uh, leading 20 to 3 now, and if they score on this drive, I, I'm not sure I bring Big Dan back into this ballgame. End of the third quarter, Miami 20, Pittsburgh 3. We'll return with Monday Night Football after this from our ABC station. tomorrow. It's the premiere of the season's most eagerly anticipated new show. The critics agree. Murder One is a must-see. It's the best. Extraordinary. A lot to love. A class act. Gripping. An A. The best new show. Tomorrow. Murder One premieres 10, 9 central on ABC. Sunday. We're back. We're back. Mel Gibson, Danny Glover, and Joe Pesci. Don't miss a single minute of Lethal Weapon 3. Sunday, rental discretion advised. Hurricane Marilyn blasts the Virgin Islands before steaming out to sea. Tonight, a closer look at Paradise Lost. Plus, find out where Marilyn is now. It's all in the night beat after the game. The clearance event of the year is at your South Florida Ford dealer now. It's our factory authorized clearance with the year's best deals on over 10,000 Ford models. Like $750 cash back when you buy any new Ford Mustang. Or lease a new Mustang for as low as $229 a month for 24 months. For a limited time, get $750 cash back or low monthly lease payments on any new Mustang. At our clearance event of the year, don't miss it. Ford, ride with the winner. They did it to you once. Now they're going to do it to you again. Finally! Six years ago, you said you fixed my TV. Come on, show it the warranty. Look, says you guarantee your work. Channel 4 is on 6, 6 is on 4, 10 still works. I'm having the same problem. What's good back here? Problem is, it's your TV. What am I supposed to do? Keep it on 10. We haven't had any complaints yet. Confused? Keep it on 10. Steve, Frank, Jimmy. All pros on the 10 team. Dan Marine on the sidelines. He's been throwing a few times, winced a little bit, but then started moving his arms up over his head and appears to be all right. Meanwhile, we start the fourth quarter. Miami with Bernie Kosar in quarterback. First and goal. The nose of the ball on the 10 yard line. And Bernie, oh, oh, Bernie no. Stop at the 11 yard line. 
almost missed a chance to see one of football's great sights. Scary. Bernie Kozar scrambling. Scary yep. when he runs. T topped only by Marino running. Let's get a report on Dan from Lynn Swan. Al, uh, I, I've been told that the wind was knocked out of him, and that's it. But when you look at him on the sideline, every time he throws, he's in pain. You look at him now, he's he's a fairly neat quarterback when he plays his game. His shirt is out. I mean, he's obviously in pain. I don't think he's going to come back in the ball game. Uh, whatever is wrong with him, they're not going to report at this moment. Bernie Kozar is just doing a fine job leading the team. Al? Second and goal. Here's Kirby. Well, there's one, and the uh, helmet again comes loose this time off the head of Darren Perry. If the you know, the Dolphins, the, the encouraging thing is that next week's the bye week. Comes at a perfect time if Marino is shaken. The, the next game they play is at Cincinnati. Then they come here with Indianapolis. Then they go to New Orleans and to the New York Jets. We saw a look at Don Shula sweating profusely on the sidelines. I, I'm not so sure he'd worked up quite that big a lather. 15 minutes ago. <laughs> I think Dan Marino hitting the ground like that, it, it would have forced me into a major Ooh. sweat. I don't blame him. Keith Sims is back in the game at left guard. It's third and goal from the nine. And this play is whistled dead. Movement on the Miami line. Although when you watch Marino throw on the sidelines, you kind of get the impression looking at him that they're Play a game, offense, five yard penalty. Still third down. You kind of get the impression that if this was the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl and the Dolphins were down by a touchdown, something tells me number 13 would be in the huddle. He'd probably had it in the end zone by now. Point, point to his chest. Things moving a little more slowly. A delay a game call there. Bernie not getting all the reps that the starting quarterback gets, of course, during the week's work. Third and goal, Kirby, and banged out of bounds at the five-yard line by Lloyd. So it'll be fourth down and goal at the five, and that'll set up a 22 or 23-yard field goal attempt. Yeah, you know you are a throwback, though, to the old days of the tough guys playing quarterback. When you're on the ground and you're hurt, and your instinct is to reach out with your good arm and grab the jersey of the guy that drove you into the ground and let him have it. That, <laughs> That is a Bobby Lane. That is a Bobby Lane. Nasloyanovic, John Kidd holding, chip shot from the 12 yard line. If Ben Greif would have been doing this game, he would have said he was giving him the business. <laughs> well, the Dolphins continue to give the Steelers the business to the tune of 23 to 3. 1254 left in the fourth. Presenting the ultimate tire for your sport utility vehicle, the Michelin LTX. Michelin's technological advances in sidewall and tread design give it a smoother, quieter ride than you might ever expect from a 4x4 tire. Yet it's rugged enough, tough enough, Michelin enough to get you through anything. The LTX series from Michelin. Poor Stalin. No more chase after moose and squirrel. Right. He make more money getting small big bunny. And so they chase the Energizer bunny all over town, which brings us to the corner of... Say, what about us? You're in the next episode. Oh. Natasha, magnetic bundle, full battery, right out. Ah! I think we stick with the moose and squirrel. Oh, boy. Still going. Long-lasting Energizer batteries keep going and... Hello from Plank Road, where our man Paul has some visitors, the Plank Road Polar Bear. Each year, the polar bears seek ultimate refreshment by throwing themselves into icy cold waters. We suggest an alternative, Ice Brewed Ice House. Ice brewed so there's never any watered down taste, just more of what you want in a beer. Ice Brewed Ice House, icy smooth refreshment without the annoying frostbite. Thanks and enjoy. Texas A&M Colorado headlining the regional college football action this week. Ohio State Pitt, Mississippi State, Tennessee. The Bruins trying to rebound after their loss to Oregon facing Washington State and Michigan State takes on Purdue 330 Eastern and 1230 Pacific this Saturday college football right here on ABC.
Have you seen that McElroy kid run for uh, Texas A&M? He can go. He can go. There goes Dan off the field, headed uh, up the tunnel, and this crowd knows who he is, too. Probably headed for a precautionary x-ray, or at the very least, uh, begin some ice or some treatment to slay whoa, whoa. to Mills, and Ernie Mills runs it back. A flag yeah. comes in Couple of them. at the 40-yard line, so it's the last thing the Steelers need, get a decent run back, try to scratch and claw their way back into the game and they'll be pushed back again. I'd say that Bill Cowers 6 and 0 record on Monday Night Football is in uh, serious jeopardy tonight. It is at the clock. Oh and here left. comes Jim Miller in to play quarterback for the Steelers. During the return number 84. Second year guy from Michigan State played in the World League. And he gets a whack at the Dolphin defense. Pittsburgh going to the bullpen, down by 20. In these mountains, you need a tough truck. Dave Ashley, search and rescue volunteer. Trails, I tend to make my own. It's one torture test after another. But the people I'm looking for depend on someone to find them. Well, I depend on something too, my Ford F-Series. How do you learn a job like this? Let's just say I drive something tougher than a golf cart on the weekends. Ford F-Series. The best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough. Thanks to Sprint Business, there's a company who does more business in skis. Sprint gave us an edge. Sprint worked with Milan and brought them real solutions to help them get ahead so they can check orders online from anywhere and promote new products through video conferencing. Now, they do business a whole new way. And sales are really soaring. We'll help your business do more business. Call Sprint Business. Believe it or not, with Hewlett Packard's real life imaging system, the print quality of HP's new DeskJet 600 series printers is so good that your work might just take on a life of its own. HP Home Printers, just what you had in mind. Texas A&M tackles Colorado. Ohio State takes on Pitt. Tennessee hosts Mississippi State or other regional action Saturday on ABC's College Football. There are the what seems to be the final numbers for Mike Tomczak tonight as he is going to watch his backup, Jim Miller, play quarterback. And of course, Tomczak backs up that guy, Neil O'Donnell. We talked about that broken bone in his hand. And there's a look at it. That's his throwing hand, his right hand. Broke his pinky finger back up in the high ball. Miller throws. The pass is incomplete. He was under a lot of pressure. Brian Cox, who was shaken earlier, comes in and puts the pressure on. What a spot for Jim Miller to come into this game. A yeah. sixth round pick a year ago out of Michigan State where he set a lot of records. And then he went off to play in the World League at Frankfurt. And, uh, they like uh, the way he plays the position, but he hasn't been there very many times. Miller throws, catch is made by Hastings, and that's the first pass completed by a Michigan State quarterback in the National Football League in 19 years. Is that right? Since Earl Morrow threw one in 1976. For Don Shula, right here. Yep. Third down and five up at the 17. Little throws. And it's the second pass completed by a Michigan Stater in 19 years. Hastings of the 22 yard. Actually, line. Miller had a first down here, depending on where they mark it. That's, you see, you're wrong, Al. Actually, Miller had completed a pass uh, earlier this season in his only attempt. It's just that he completed it to the other team. To it was an interception. That's <laughs> right. To the Lions. He was he oh, was 0 for he was 0 for 1 uh, with an interception. Miller picks up the first down here, works from the gun at the 22 yard line. He's flipped out to Hastings, and Vincent takes him down. And you, you can, the Miami defense is pretty angry. I mean, they're angry at, at, at what Lloyd 
what they perceive Lloyd did to Marino. Let's put it that way. Well, well, they were angry for all the talk that went on during the course of the game. They were angry when they came into this game and when Marino did go out, and whether it was a, certainly not an illegal hit or anything. Uh, I mean, it was frustration as much as anything else. And guys, this is no secret. It helps to be a little angry when you play this game. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is not exactly a mild-mannered contest that we're looking at here. Angry men play better. And when you bring in a young quarterback like 16, Jim Miller, the best thing you can do is bring everybody. Dan, except in poker. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is not poker. <laughs> it's first and 20 after the... And here comes Marino. Here comes Marino back out onto the field. Still looking a little disheveled. Yeah, but he's got his shoulder pads on. Yeah. So, Mike Swanee was worried about his wardrobe. You know, he's got a very dirty field out here with the infield still down. And ordinarily you wouldn't, on a grass field, you wouldn't see all the dirt. But the man's had his feathers ruffled in that. He's yeah. been hit a few times. No amount of applause, no length of a standing ovation could possibly convey what the people of South Florida think about Dan Marino. First and 25. Screen, Fred McAfee. And he gets down at the 19-yard line, taken down there. And Lynn Swan, what you got for us? Well, Al, they took Dan Marino into the locker room, and they wanted to get his shoulder pads off to check him out with the equipment off so they could get to his chest. He says his major complaint was when he was wincing and throwing the football was that right in the center of his chest is where it hurt. Not his shoulders, not his arm, but right in the center of his chest. He said if he had to go back in the ball game and play, he could. But with this kind of lead, he's going to stay out if he can. Okay, thank you, Swanee Miller to Johnny Barnes, who reaches out, stretching for it, and makes a very nice catch at the 44. A terrific catch. About the best looking between. offensive play the Steelers have run all night. Right. Well thrown ball by Jim Miller. 23 to 3, Miami. First down from the 43 yard line. The Dolphins are going to get feet drops it. Dolphins are going to get called for 12 men off on the field. Jeff Gross, I believe, was coming off the field and was kind of jogging, and I, I don't think he made it. Don Shula is a little exercised over the call. Yeah, he just didn't run fast enough. Too many men in the field, on the defensive team, five yard penalty, still first down. They made a last minute substitution and, and Look at the right on the 45. There's Jeff Cross. He kind of he's not exactly uh, digging, 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 heading for the sidelines. And Don had a little chat yeah. with him. Uh, he will sprint next time. Yeah, he's yep. a good two yards onto the field when the when the ball snapped. Full fledged amble. You know, that's not a changeover in hockey where they'll give you the <laughs> some guys going into the box uh, and some guys uh, coming out. You got to get off the field. Hockey about ready to start here. Yeah. In training camp already. Huh? Preseason underway. First and five. And Miller goes down in the arms of Tim Bowens, last year's defensive rookie of the year out of Mississippi. Well, he gives you such support against the run and also gives you that big surge up the middle that helps the guys on the corner. He's turning into a great one. Miller going without a huddle now on second down and 13 from the 40 yard line. Under 10 minutes to play, 23 to 3, Miami. Miller guns one to a wide open Bernie Mills, and that's a first down at the 46. Well, I'm the telling you, I really like his arm. He, that, he had something on that, timed out beautifully. Well, I'll tell you why they completed it. The Dolphins only had 10 men on the field that time. They are turned around in their defensive. Jeff Gross came out onto the field this time. They're back to 11 now. They put the pressure on, but Miller steps up and then throws it in between a couple of Dolphins. And J.P. Brown upset him to make the pick here. Yancey Thigpen, the intended receiver. We're seeing a little waning of the concentration mm -hmm. here by the by the Dolphins. Once one play, they got 12. Next one, they have 10. You know, you were talking about Nick Bonacani among the former. You got your big Dolphin dinner tomorrow night, don't you? Nick is coming up with his son Mark. Of course, Mark was paralyzed in a football accident they've founded the Miami Project and they've done remarkable work to cure paralysis in a big dinner in New York tomorrow night with a lot of Knicks friends and teammates up there to help them celebrate a, a lot of breakthroughs 
Second and ten. Hastings runs out of bounds at the 41 yard line. Five yards shy of the first. Or More than five that, though, coming. Be making a. Over a million dollars. I was talking to Wayne Heisinger, the Dolphins owner. He'll be flying up. A lot of support for the Bona County family. Tell you what, the Dolphins defensive line is so tired. They are. Coleman, Armstrong, and Cox all just took themselves out of the ball game. They're too tired to rush the pass. Third down four, and the Steelers weren't set, and they'll be flagged for motion here as Hastings makes the catch, but that's going to come back. Well, we were talking earlier, it, it, 90 degrees of kickoff, and with a lot of humidity, and Dan, you've played in that, it, it can really get you. Yeah, it does. And I don't think it's tougher than anybody, uh, than on the defensive line. The, it, I believe it takes more effort to rush the passer. Illegal shift on the offensive team. Number 80 was never set at the snap. Five yards, still third down. I think it requires more physical exertion rushing the quarterback as a defensive lineman than really any other position on the field. Beautiful night here in South Florida. Absolutely one of the most picturesque sights in the NFL is Joe Robbie Stadium. I'm going to fly this blimp in a couple weeks. Ooh. Mickey's bringing the Goodyear blimp to St. Louis, and I'm going Ooh. to uh, bring my logbook and are log you, an hour in the blimp. Are you checked out in there? At the controls? I will be when I'm done. Ooh. <laughs> Maybe I'll, maybe I'll fly it through the arch. There's a collect call from the FAA. On the third down and nine from the 46-yard line. And the catch is made by Yancey Thigpen, and he's ridden to the turf just about at the first down marker. Yeah. I'll say it again. This is a good-looking arm on Jim Miller. Yeah. He snapped that off. And there was pretty good coverage to Thigpen. J.B. Brown was there. Miller was still able to get it in. Very close to a first, and they may measure here at the 36-yard line. 8.28 to go. This isn't bad coverage. And Miller, with a lot on that ball, gets it in, gets the first down. Steelers next week go home, face Minnesota. Then they play San Diego, rematch of the AFC Championship game. Brown making the stop after Thick Ben holds it in. And they hope to have Neil O'Donnell back by the San Diego game. If not, their next game is at Jacksonville on the 8th of October. Miller throws 36 yard line. It's Hastings. And he's taken down at the 30, gain of five. Good. I think, Frank, earlier you mentioned and made this point that we were talking about the, the status of these two ball clubs. And I think everybody would agree that this Dolphin squad is better than last year's. And, and most people would agree that this edition of the Steelers squad with what's happened to them to this point is not the equal of last year's ball club that, that was one play away from going to the Super Bowl. Well, they're minus Rod Woodson, of course, due to injury. O'Donnell will come back, but another loss, too, is Eric Green. And not only is that a Pittsburgh loss, that's a Miami game. Well, that also not only affects their passing game, but they were the number one running team the Steelers were a year ago, and a lot of that had to do with one Eric Green, not as a receiver, but as a blocker, blocking tight end. 13th play of the drive. Flag is thrown, and the catch is made by Hastings, and Buckley will get credit for the tackle. That would be a first down. Say one thing about this Miami pressure, it's not taking Jim Miller long to look like he's been in this game yeah. for a couple of quarters. He's, start, he's starting to get dirtied up. Illegal formation. The tackle number 72 was lined up in the backfield. Five yard penalty, still third down. Called Leon Searcy. Another Miami product. He played his ball here at the University of Miami. Steelers first round choice back in 92. They're giving these offensive linemen a little leeway, but take a look at Leon. He's the closest offensive lineman to you. He's about a yard and a half off the ball. Just a, a little farther than you're supposed to be. Third and 10, 35 yard line, seven and a half minutes to play. Miami 23, Pittsburgh three. There's a little shovel toss to McAfee. And and they're out to the 27-yard line. Obviously, in a four-down situation, and they wouldn't be running the ball on third and ten. 
So they'll go on fourth down now. Fourth and a short two at the 27. Gene Atkins in on the last stop. Fourth and two. Miller looking deep for Mills, and he makes the catch for the touchdown. Hey, he got position on J.B. Brown, and Pittsburgh is in the end zone for the first time tonight. I tell you, that is a pretty classy throw. He did not intend to go there, and Miller was trying to get it out to the short man, and somehow he spotted fake pin and laid up a perfect pass. Well, the other side of it is, is that the Dolphins' pass rush is, is running out of gas. Ernie Mills was able to break loose and get well, open because pin, Ernie Mills was yeah, the, because the deep of a, receiver. Because of a lot of time, though. I mean, these guys don't hit Miller until late. This had lots of time to, to develop. J.B. Brown, not bad coverage, considering that it was a good six seconds from the snap to the catch. And Miller paid the price as Trace Armstrong barreled into him. Yeah, that Adani very upset. That drive started at their own 10-yard line. Yep, and that's why Tom's upset. 90 yards to the number three quarterback. 23 to 10. Everybody figures that dogs like to chase after things. Well, we do. To a point. But not over and Come along. over Come along. again. Come along. As for me, well, I don't go chasing after nothing that don't have soft hair, big eyes, red dog, bold yet smooth, easy to drink, and a real nice set of teeth. There are a lot of reasons we created Ford Windstar with so much passenger and cargo room. A lot of reasons we gave Windstar a wide stance for secure handling. And reasons it has standard dual airbags, standard anti-lock brakes, plus the government's highest front crash test rating. We'd be glad to name all the reasons, but you've already named them. Ford Windstar, created for the most important people in the world. The issue is breakdowns. Odds are your car will have one. But you don't have to be left stranded. Liberty Mutual Auto Insurance customers get membership in its roadside assistance program. One call and help's on the way, anywhere, anytime. Let's hope you never need it. Liberty Mutual, facing the issues that face our customers. Tomorrow, the biggest home improvement ever. See how the Taylors spent their summer vacation. Look, it's Al Alb. The season premiere of Home Improvement tomorrow on ABC. Dolphin defense had played so well uh, tonight and on that last drive. Jim Miller at the helm, a long drive, and it culminates in a touchdown to make it 23 to 10 and give Pittsburgh some life. And now we'll see if Johnson tries to onside kick it as Miami lines up to accept an onside kick, but he sends it all the way down to the 10-yard line, and Terrell Buckley, the former Packer, takes it out to the 24. You know, this afternoon, there was a groundbreaking at Gwynn Cherry Park in Liberty City here in Miami. Eight months after Super Bowl 29, the NFL and the South Florida Host Committee have set in motion the process to build an over $2 million facility. Youth Education Town in Miami will be the third in the program, which started in Los Angeles following Super Bowl 27, and it commits to combining recreation activities with education enhancement for minority, disadvantaged, and at-risk youngsters. Former Dolphin All-Pro Dwight Stevenson will manage the 10-month construction process. Well, they're on the way here in Miami. Mm -hmm. Miami on the way here to try and to take as much time off the clock as they can, and Greg Lloyd tackles Kirby about six yards behind the line of scrimmage. And it's vital for Pittsburgh now to force Miami into a three and out and get the ball back as soon as possible. Well, Eric Green, he's too far out for Green. Irving Fryer, who's in motion, says, I, I want no part of this guy. So poor Terry Kirby left to uh, die in his own backfield. That's uh, I would like to know Irving's <laughs> assignment on that play. I, I think it might have been 95. Irving kind of gave him the old aid. He was they? looking for a 20. Second down and 17 and the veteran 
Kosar is he a beauty he took it right oh. down to one second on the play clock and there's Byers to the 19 that's that's the great thing about having a, a guy like Bernie Kosar as your backup quarterback he's so smart he took the play clock all the way down he forces Pittsburgh now to take a timeout here to stop the clock with 552 to play in the fourth Dolphins up by 13. Oil, Performax 100 Synthetic Motor Oil presents the 100% protection play. The Denver Broncos are accustomed to miracle finishes at their corral against Kansas City. The men in orange needed the ultimate protection to seal victory. And on a designed rollout, center Keith Cart supplied the protection for John Elway's breathtaking connection. He's at the 20 yard line. He's hit and pulled down at the 16. Wow, how'd they do that? Pennzoil introduces Performax 100. 100% synthetic at a breakthrough price. 100% synthetic at a price this slow? How'd they do that? Leave it to Pennzoil to make synthetic affordable. <laughs> how'd they do that? Hey, there's more. An extra $6 rebate on a case. Huh. Or $6 off on an oil change by the pros. <laughs> how'd they do that? Engine problems? Before you try a tune-up, try gum out first. The solution could be less than $5. The new Ford Contour is full of great ideas at a great price. Exciting ideas, like Waterlink suspension for crisp, responsive handling. Comforting ideas, like air conditioning and Contour's exclusive Micron air filter. Safe ideas, like dual airbags and remote heated mirrors. Sound ideas, like an AM-FM stereo cassette. And maybe the best idea, you get all this for just $14,670. Great ideas at a great price. The totally new Ford Contour. What would you do if your ex-wife was charged with murder? If she's the mother of your daughter, you'd do anything to help her. Mark Harmon in an all-new episode of Charlie Grace Thursday on ABC. Steeler defense holding here. Third down and 16 for Miami trying to force a punt. And uh, there is still life in the Steelers. Not much, but they'll be breathing if they hold them here as they get the ball back with about six minutes to play. Kosar. And that's incomplete. And it will be fourth down. But again, Kosar doing nothing to get in trouble through throwing the ball well out of bounds. Crowd tonight is 72,874. The significance is it's the biggest crowd in the history of Joe Rogers Stadium. And not lost on this crowd was the relatively easy dispatching of an AFC rival. John Kidd sends one to the 39. Fair caught by Andre Hastings. 536 remaining in the fourth quarter. The Dolphins now have one competitor that must finish a game ahead of them to get home field advantage in the AFC playoffs. It's nice to keep track of those guys uh, as you move through your schedule. First I know it's only, being that's right. Head. I know it's only the third game of the season, but this is a chit the Dolphins can can put in the bank. Mm -hmm. The Steelers must finish a game ahead of them to to have the playoff game between these two take place at Three Rivers, and that's speaking of the, of the bank, not going to be easy to do. One. Yeah, first, we don't have a bank without him. First and ten at the 39-yard line. Miller under pressure, and it's incomplete. Hastings, the intended receiver, and he was covered with three Dolphins in the area. And Marino now with the helmet back on. <laughs> Bernie's is off. I think he might be going back in. Why? <laughs> well, I think probably if uh, we talk about what Greg Lloyd has been saying all week, that would be one reason. But I think Dan Marino, if you know him, might be wanting to go back in. Second and ten. Hastings. He's inside the 40 to the 35 yard line. Well, if Pittsburgh scores a touchdown, that certainly will be a reason for Dan Marino to go back in. First and 10, 35 yard line, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now Marino is serious. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Time out, time. 23 to 17, and that would be the score if Pittsburgh would score. 
That puts them within a touchdown of the lead. Yes, that would get Dan Marino back in the ballgame. Never said timeout. The officials timeout. For an apparently equipment repair here, Andre Hastings readjusting the helmet, so that's not a charge timeout. Miller throws again, 27 yard line, caught there by Johnny Barnes. I am impressed with 16. Now he's certainly provided some spark, hasn't he? That's 18 consecutive pass plays run by the Steelers. Second and one, Miller. Under pressure, throws caught by Johnny Barnes at the 13-yard line. Let's take a look at that again. That, that was brilliant. That was a that good throw. Was a <laughs> arm across the body, snapped it off. Beautifully done. Well, not a lot of people playing this game can throw the ball like that. Had a lot on it. You kill the clock. You get a first down at the 12-yard line. Meanwhile, Cox just took himself out of the game. At the 12-yard line, Miller throws, and it's caught by Hastings at the 8-yard line. These guys, here comes Marco Coleman out. These guys are exhausted. Aubrey Beavers comes in. They are putting everybody they've got in a down position trying to rush the quarterback. Second and six. And that's incomplete, intended for Hastings. Pittsburgh with two timeouts, 4.18 on the clock, and down by 13 points. This, this Dolphins defense, the guys up front who are rushing the quarterback, have, as you said, now done it for, what, 19 or 20 consecutive times. They are on the verge of tripping over their own tongues. You're so right. It's so much easier to block offensively oh, yeah. than it is to rush the passer. This will be the 22nd pass play in a row here. Third down and six at the nine-yard line. No, instead they're going to shovel it to McAfee, and he gets rammed down by Lewis Oliver. Should have been a pass play. And at the eight-yard line, Cower has to spend the time out here. Jim Miller, he's on the flip card at 6'2", 226 pounds. A sixth round draft pick a year ago out of Michigan State. Set Michigan State records for completions and completion percentage of over 62%. They like him a lot. And he has done a good job tonight coming off the bench. It was one of his big pluses coming out of college was the fact that he was a conservative quarterback. He, did, he didn't throw risky passes. He didn't turn it over. He didn't throw foolishly into coverage. He was a very mature guy. And you can see it here that he's got the tools. He's had precious little work here in the NFL, a World League, a good training ground for these guys. And Miller looks to me like he made the most of it. Well, think how little work he'll he'll get actually with the Pittsburgh offense. That's been going strictly to Mike Tomzak since Neil O'Donnell went down. You want to get Tomzak all the work you can, so he's worked very little with the offensive unit in practice during the week. Well, you got Cox and Coleman back in the uh, in the lineup now, and they've had a breather. And Pittsburgh, as you can see, has dominated the fourth quarter, 161 yards to to only a nickel for the for the Dolphins. Well, it comes down to this for the yeah. Steelers, fourth and six at the eight. Suck it up, time. Can they stay in the game? No. Int. J. B. Brown picked it off, but it's going to be a touchback. There's no run back. Yancey Thigpen, the intended receiver, jump ball, J.B. Brown wins the tip. And you know, J.B. Brown just stayed on the ground, I think a half a second too long, because he was free to get up and go they, if he wanted to. stayed on the ground, they blew the whistle, <laughs> and J.B. Brown is vindicated for, actually he has played well tonight. They have thrown almost everything at him all night long, and they opened up that way, and they, they are going to end up that way. They beat him pretty badly a year ago when Tomzak set a record for him of over 340 yards and Pittsburgh uh, beat Miami 16 13 in the last November how many interceptions is that for JB tonight it's at least two when one set, they took uh, away that's right they did take one away right when, totally when, when uh, Cox was offside right right three interceptions two fumbles five turnovers for the Steelers <laughs> and Terry Kirby 
for a gain of 22 out to the 42-yard line. Take a look again. It's just a little fade route, a little zig to the outside, played well by Brown, who had help on the inside. Atkins was inside for him. He knew that. He stayed to the outside. And you're right, he stayed down there a little too long. He might have, had he bounced up, he might have got himself six out of that. Yeah, he was not touched. He's free to go if he chooses. I guess once you're down on the ground, the, the official's just going to call it right there. Kirby, Shields knocks him down. His interception. End of the night for Marino. J.B. Brown now has 15 career interceptions, and it's the first time he's had a two pick game in his career. Well, he had a lot of opportunities. They were over there working on him all night. Don Shula, 26th year here. Before that, the Colts. Clearly, the coach with the most tenure in the National Football League. But when you talk about the tenuousness of head coaching, you just look over to Son David in Cincinnati. As Kirby takes it to the 44, it's it's almost impossible to believe, but Dave Shula now in his what fourth year at the helm in Cincinnati would be number eight of the 30 coaches in terms of tenure in the National Football League. That's hard to believe. <laughs> well, that was a look at a warrior yeah. too, wasn't it? Strelzik. Yep. There's another one. That's Steve Entman. Boy, hard luck, Steve, battling to come back again, and he has made it with the Dolphins. And there's. David Shula at the bottom of that list. Count them down. Number eight. Who could buy it? You could, you could win a little money in some trivia contests with that. Mm. He has a little bit more tenure than does Power because Bill was not hired until after Shula had already been hired in Cincinnati. He'd like to have Power's record, too. Yes, he would. Ron Heller. He'd like to have his dad's record. Former Eagle who brings a lot to the Dolphins offensive line. Back home again is Leon Searcy. These guys have uh, fought it out tonight, but it has belonged to the Dolphins. The amazing thing about Don Shula's record, uh, was it 33 years? Uh, he's had only two losing seasons. Well, that truly is remarkable. Third down and nine. He had one in the 70s and one in the 80s, and finally is tackled. And Pittsburgh does not have a timeout remaining, so. Miami will kick and will take the play clock as far down as they can. Dick LeBeau, the defensive coordinator. Remember, Dom Capers was their defensive coordinator and is now the head coach of the Carolina Panthers. Well, Dick LeBeau is a great football player, too. He had over sure 60 was. interceptions with Detroit. He took the defensive coordinating job this last January. He's done a fine job with it. They're an attack defense. Make no bones about it, but they are really going to miss Rod Woodson. He was such a key person, particularly on third down. They moved him around and let him do different things. Kids kick. Taken in at the 17-yard line by Hastings. And that makes it a little exciting before he gets tackled up at the 29-yard line. It was a real fine returning punt. So Rod Woodson, of course, did that and did it so well for the Steelers. And Hastings... Last week, a 72-yard return for a touchdown against Houston. They have not, by the way, officially put Woodson on what would be the injured reserve list, meaning that he'd be officially gone for the season, even though I guess it is a very, very minimal chance. Not at all. I that, think. Yeah. They, 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 well, they're at least they're keeping their option open for, for the moment. That's an inspirational thing for the team, I believe. And uh, I think that's, I bet he wanted it that way, too. Well, I, uh, Obviously, Bill Cower thinks there's some chance, however remote it might be, that, that he has a chance to play or else he wouldn't be doing this. But I'm with you guys. Uh, coming back from a full-blown ACL yep, yep. reconstructive type surgery, by the end of this season and into the playoffs, I don't see how it could happen. He's hoping he can play on January 28th. is <laughs> what he's hoping yeah. if they get that far. It's just like a dream can hold in your hands. Taurus stole your heart once. It'll steal it again. Taurus, making the dream come true. Presenting the 
ultimate tire for your 4x4, the Michelin LTX. Michelin technology gives it a smooth, quiet ride. Yet it's tough enough, Michelin enough, to get you through anything. Hello from Plank Road, where our man Paul is ready with a simple little demonstration. This is watered down. Ooh, not pretty. This is not watered down. This is Ice House. It's ice brutes, there's never any watered down taste, and that's why Ice House is always so remarkably smooth when it's going down. So remember, watered down, and not watered down. Ice House, thanks, and enjoy. From the creators of Basic Instinct, last time they took you to the edge, this time, they're taking you all the way. Showgirls, rated NC-17, no children under 17 admitted. Starts Friday at theaters everywhere. It's just like a dream you can hold in your hands. Taurus stole your heart once, it'll steal it again. Taurus, making the dream come true. the history of the NFL, the Rams hold the record for most consecutive games with 300 or more yards gained at 29 back in the Waterfield Van Brocklin days in the late 40s and early 50s as McAfee drops it. The Dolphins were second on that list, earlier Dolphins, and the current Dolphins had 25 straight games with 300 or more yards. That will end, though, in all probability right now as they've only picked up 258 tonight, and that tells you that Pittsburgh's done a pretty good job defensively tonight and this game has been won by the Dolphins because Pittsburgh turned the ball turned over, the ball over. and That's Miami it. cashed in. Well they turned the ball over and they didn't move it yep. a whole lot early. A lot of those Pittsburgh yards came in the fourth quarter. Third and ten Miller throws Hastings grabs it. You also oh, notice on that graphic but the the previous uh, you know the second place of 26 that was a Dan Marino led Miami yeah. outfit as well. You, there's a, a common denominator in there and his name is Dan Marino. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think the Steelers That's, may have found themselves a different backup quarterback. And a good one. Miller he's got a fine arm and that's knocked down by Michael Stewart. Second and ten. Well the Steelers will go home play in six days five turnovers tonight Cower in his fourth year most in any game equaling the most in any game since Bill took over in 92. I'd say there's a pretty good chance that they didn't win that game either. Tough to turn it over five times and win. I don't care if uh, you're the world champions playing an expansion team it's tough to do. Second down and ten at the 46. Movement, Pittsburgh. We're going to see the Steelers once more on a Monday night. That's the 13th of November against Cleveland. Good matchup. Outstanding. Key in the match. AFC Central. And the next time we see Miami, gents, well, I mean, just consider the possibilities as we sit here right now. November 20th, yeah. right here, Miami hosting the, the 49ers. 49ers on Monday Night Football. Hmm. Both undefeated. Hmm. That's our first the dream promo. game. Yeah. <laughs> first of many. Of course, that game is after the 49er Dallas yes, it is. matchup, which is the week before. A game of marginal interest. <laughs> what are they playing to that? We'll be playing the Supreme Court. <laughs> Second and 15. McAfee <laughs> takes it to the 49. <laughs> Frank, you know, don't are. waste don't waste those lines at, <laughs> at, at 10 after 12 in the morning. I'm not so sure that I'm not so sure that we shouldn't get the game started with erecting a ring <laughs> at center field and let Carmen Policy and Jerry Jones go about four ring four oh, rounds yeah. together. Well, <laughs> Carmen will have a lot of company these days as McAfee takes it to the 38 again. The news coming out tonight that the league's going to file suit against Jerry Jones to the tune of 300 million dollars for violating the. Properties arrangement. 
Miller hey, stops hey, the hey, clock hey. here. 